Hi guys, welcome back to the Kit and Krista podcast, episode 29. We wow. were just talking about how you bolded it. Now I can't no forgetting lose my it now. place and you can't be mad. Um, we are very excited today to talk about Mr. Sakurai and his YouTube channel and Kojima and wow. his podcast. Feels like there's a bit of a shift happening in the whole games and games media space. We're going to talk about that yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's going to be fun to see what that means when these big developers become almost like content creators. Right. So maybe they're just following in our footsteps. I think I'm just saying. We're the inspiration. Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're also um, going to be going to PAX. Yeah. So we got a kind of a PAX themed episode as well, which is going to be really fun. We do. Fun. Yeah. 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 I'm excited about this. Um, thank you as always to our wonderful Patreon family subscribers for keeping this show going. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're almost going to be at episode 30, which is going to be exciting. It's all because of you guys. So thank you so much. If you'd like to join our Patreon, it's patreon.com slash Kit and Krista. We do tons of fun stuff there. We've got this really fun Discord bonus Q&As, you get early access. Just this weekend, we had our uh, meetup for 1UP yes. Club and Superstars playing the Splatfest. So much The fun. timing was perfect. The timing was perfect, and we all had a nice collective Splatfest playthrough together, and it was nice to have people to commiserate with when we were all losing. Or so. getting disconnects. Or getting disconnects, <laughs> yes. It's a nice community to have yeah, around you yeah. when you're, like, frustrated. <laughs> no, it's super fun, but I think when the game's finally out next month, we can actually play that properly, like, play it you know, together. in teams together. Yes, we were complaining that the people we're getting matched with were not, like, the best. So it's going to be fun to play actually with each other. Right. So that's going to be great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we had tons of fun. Um, you, though... You really had Me? a you had a big week had a kind of a big filming week last week. We have been incredibly busy, I should say. This is this has <laughs> felt like happened? one of the more like busy stretches that we have here. Yeah, I felt like June was a little busy because we had all the right. e like the faux E three stuff. Right. This this we did it to ourselves. This we really did. It was self inflicted, right. but in like the best way. Well, we're, so. So we're going to PAX in a couple days. We yeah. got to get ready for that. We're seeing we Reggie there. We'll talk about that. Oh my gosh, so excited! Um, to and do then that. we've got we've got some pretty ambitious videos in Super Kitten Krista sixty four, right? Um, that we've been doing. It all started with the Street Pass video, which it seemed like everyone just loved, and we yeah. loved making it. It was one of my, I mean, that and the Game Boy Advance, the camera video has been one of two of my favorites. Yeah. But I don't know. I think I might. These two videos are going to get unseated with the two more that are coming. Oh really? So, wow. you have probably seen, hopefully you've, you guys have seen this one already, but um, you went down like a nostalgia memory lane thing. Right. Um, with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Cowabunga Collection and the original Round Table Pizza. So that video is out now. But I thought this one was really special because it was like, this is like your actual life. It is. You know we we do we jo we do joke around that these are not just videos these are our lives yeah. and this one is especially right like a very important piece of my life that yeah. led me to where I am now right um, and like you know this is like kind of cheesy but it it is kind of brave for you to just like put your personal stuff out there on the internet for a bunch of strangers oh I don't mind it I mean I it, mean it's not like a bad thing but it's like you know not everybody can do that. Right. Even know? though, I mean, like, it was a good reason, because, I, again, I drive by that round table very often, and I'm yeah. always, like, looking at it wistfully, of, like, oh, that's where that happened, what, what would right. it be like to go inside? This gave me a good reason to, like, do it, to and it was so it. it was so and great. It was so great, and it really, like, helped, the experience really held up, I think, which well, was that, incredible. And we, that was kind of our conclusion at the end of the video, was, like, it was so good to affirm, like, how positive each of these things were, mm -hmm. and it wasn't like in hindsight of like, oh, that was that actually was like a rose colored. That was actually moment. lame, and I was just some dumb kid. It was like, no, yeah. all of this stands the test of time, yeah. and it validated this great memory of mine. Exactly, yeah. So, so you guys definitely should go check out the video. It's really fun, and I hope that it makes you a little bit nostalgic for your own childhood. Well, I've seen a lot too. of people saying like, oh, well, I had this ex similar experience at this local pizza place with mm -hmm. this arcade game. I feel like a lot of people... This is like formative years for when, all of us. When arcade yeah. games were still a thing, had something like that. Exactly. Which is really fun. Which is really fun. So this is like a collective thing that we can all yeah. share together. But it was really fun making this one because it was truly like this moment that was so important to you that like we get got to relive. Yeah. And I got, I wasn't there when you were nine, so I got to uh, see it. Well, now because we need to find... What is the, what is the Krista equivalent we of this We need to go to like a nickel city. Where is there like <laughs> a nickel... We need to gone, find like, a, like an actual arcade yeah, and yeah. like 
to ma- to make my childhood dream come true is like give me unlimited quarters. Oh like, just yeah. Just get get me like a sack full of quarters and just let me go to town. Okay. Because I would really that was like my dream as a kid, but my mom would only give me like two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> quarters at a time. Like oh no. It's true. I spend most of my time in arcades just watching. Yeah, because I didn't have enough money yeah. to play the games, but I love them. Right. I love them. Um, so that video is out now, and it was really, really fun. And it made me really hungry for pizza. Pizza was good. Pizza was good. I was editing that video, and I was like, I can eat more of that pizza. Pizza was really good. Yeah. Um, you were saying that we had a really fun One Up Club meetup. We do these monthly with our One Up Club and our superstar members, and it's always a great time. We had a really fun turnout this time when we played um, the Splatfest. Um, I felt bad for some of our lovely international Members who had to change I mean, the region. <laughs> we didn't know that they were going to be so strict about I that. No, we kind of had to play it fast and loose. Yeah, we're, we're normally, you know, we do a lot of organization of like, well, we're going to play this game. We'll set right. up, you know, a custom room and we'll play privately. This exactly. one, it's like, who knows what's going to be in this version? So we'll just yeah. kind of play it and hang out. Right, which ended up being a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, and um, you know, again, it was fun to share some of the the highs and lows <laughs> of that experience. Um, and, you know, it's always, it's, I feel like now that we've had a couple of these One Up Club meetups, like we really have gotten to know everyone yeah. so much better. And it just feels like really comfortable and chill. And we're just like friends hanging out and playing games together. Mm-hmm. So I really love, I really love that. And I, yeah, I can't wait to actually play this game for reals with all of our Patreon members because I think we're going to dominate. <laughs> we're going to be good. Well, I mean, they're probably going to dominate, less so us. I didn't win that's, a single that, game of that Splatfest until, like, the last minute. That's what I meant, really. <laughs> they're going to dominate and make us look good. Yeah. yeah. The, ro- the royal we. The royal we. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The exactly. Vista King and the Recycling Queen. That's what hey, you still are. <laughs> Chris Tobian Queen. <laughs> Get it right. Pay the price. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was, it was really fun. It was very, very fun. Um... The packs. Days away. Moments. Um, Days of so panicking. Let's, well, why don't we go through four. our why don't we go through our schedule at packs? Okay. So we're going to be there um, Friday through Sunday. Through Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, flying up Friday morning. This is our first time back in Seattle since. Um, oh gosh. Twenty er, early twenty like really early twenty twenty. I remember we had a meeting at headquarters. We did. You're right. You're right. You're right. A very big meeting with a lot of people who came in from Japan. Probably shouldn't have happened. Yeah. Given where things were headed. And I had I was also on an international trip before that. I was I was and got extremely sick mysteriously. And I was very sick afterwards. But um, no, it's going to be great to be back in town. And you know, there's a lot of people. It's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be strange. I feel like a little bit. It will definitely feel strange, but I think it'll feel nice. Yeah, not, not, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it won't feel like bad, but it'll definitely feel yeah. strange. So, fri- so Friday is kind of a, you know, get established, get your foundation. We've got to pick up pick our badge. We've got some really basic stuff to do. We got, we're doing a panel. We've got to look, just look at the room where we're going to do the panel. Yeah, don't try not to get lost. That'll be, that'll be the first moment of panic for you seeing the room. Yeah, maybe just film that. <laughs> maybe you vlog. don't have to go for that. I'll do we're, it myself. We're going to vlog <laughs> it so you can see my various stages of panic throughout this video, right. I'm sure. Right, That Yeah, yeah that'll be an episode of Super Kitten Krista 64 after PAX. Is yeah. Our, is our, our vlog of the whole oh, boy. trip. I'm getting kind of nervous. Saturday uh, again, is, is a big packed day, though. Um, Saturday's gonna be really busy. We're meeting with Reggie. Yeah, exactly. And, um, I'm so excited. We're to doing meet with Reggie. That, that's going to be a big chunk of a future podcast episode. Is is what we do with him. We're yeah. get we're getting questions. I haven't seen Reggie in person for a long time. We no. Talk to him um, definitely throughout the whole like process of us leaving Nintendo right. and, and he was so instrumental yeah. in he's gonna us. get a big hug um, yes I can't wait to give him, him a big hug oh I my d- gosh last night I sent him an email that felt like it was 2015 I saw that email last night and I was like oh this is vibes from I like, sent him a very detailed bulleted list of everything exactly he's gonna be doing the schedule we used to work with Reggie and like that email was so perfect <laughs> I was like, oh, uh, only you could send an email. We know what that. Reggie wants to see in an email. That's right. <laughs> Even though his email to us was like so casual. He called us out. He's like, hello, Super Kitten Krista 64. Did you also consider? And then he had all these. <laughs> he had all these deluxe, new, super, new, yeah. new XL. <laughs> so like his email was very fun and yeah, jaunty. And you right. sent him back like the most professional email ever. at like He's nine, the big boss. At like eight o'clock on a Sunday what night. What am I going to do? He's going to be like, why am I getting this He's right? still the big boss. He will always be forever be the big boss he, uh, 
Yeah. Absolutely correct. You will. I will always hold your glasses, Reggie. I will always carry your glass of anything you want. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Yeah. Oh my god. So we're spending. Um, we have a good chunk of time with him. Yeah, we're gonna have some lunch. Right. And we're gonna record um, a really fun segment. Right. Where we ask ten burning questions. To I don't Reggie. know why they're burning, but they're they. They're just definitely are. burning. They're, the mics are the hottest, hot Japanese email incoming, Reggie. Yeah. Um, but we got. Some questions from our lovely Patreon right. subscribers. They get the opportunity to ask Reggie a question, yeah. which is pretty awesome. Right. And then, of course, we have some, we got of some our questions, questions of our own. That's right. Um, Reggie's going to talk about his book some more, I'm sure, yeah. which is going to be awesome. Yeah. If you guys haven't picked up uh, Reggie's book, Disrupting the Game, you absolutely have to. Or you can listen to him. The it. audio version, the, too. This is what I yeah. did, and I loved it, right. every moment of it. Um, yeah, so that that's Friday sort of... Early afternoon. That's and, Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Oh, early no. afternoon. You've got a lot of schedule confusion. I'll just oh, keep no. going through okay, the schedule. Go- we made ourselves a schedule, and I'm still confused. I'm not confused. Okay, okay, okay. You go. So after that, we have our panel. That's right. Which is, again, the centerpiece of, of concern for you for reasons I don't quite understand. I don't um, know. I'm really so scared. We have, we have a very nice room. Uh, we're going to be doing a panel. We're going to be doing a live episode of this very podcast. Yes. Um, we will be recording that and releasing that the follow- a few days later, the following week. Mm-hmm. PAX also has told us that this is going to be streamed. They have, not, they have not given us the details, though. So <laughs> I cannot, we cannot tell you today how that's going to work. Just look at the PAX Stuff. website. I don't know. If, 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 we have, if they ever tell us, we'll tweet tell that you. out. We'll yeah. tell you. Um, but there will be a lot of ways to catch up on that or watch it. Yeah. Or if you're at PAX, please come in person and save uh, this lovely person, Krista, some distress. Please. please. <laughs> we also had a great moment this weekend where one of our, our Patreon people was like, oh, on the PAX app, you can rate oh my all of the... I didn't know that. <laughs> all of the speakers. And I gave you five stars. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what? Now I'm like checking it daily. Like, is, is anyone giving me some... Worse score than have you downloaded time. the app and have you given yourself five stars? I can't do that, right? Why not? That's cheating. No, you have to do that. Okay, fine, I'll do that. I mean, did you? You do could that? you could also go to the Apple Store and just go phone by phone, just like yes, 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 <laughs> five, five, five. I'm gonna write a code. I mean, you should be I'll doing. I hope you're doing that daily for this podcast, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> writing code. Um, yes, please come. It's right. in the Sphinx Theater. Right. Please and come. yes, it's uh, it's uh, Saturday afternoon, three thirty. If you are there. 30. Come join us. It'll be a great time. It'll be fun. Um, and then Sunday, Sunday we're heading back, but before then, we're going to really check out the show mm-hmm. and, and build out this vlog. I love the indie stuff at yes. PAX. That's like my favorite thing ever. So I'm going to spend, I think, a lot of time there yeah. checking all that stuff out. I haven't been to a proper like show in so right. long. Right. So it's going to be it's going to be interesting and, and fun to see it again. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We're going to swing by the Nintendo booth. We're debating whether that's going to be awkward or not. It's I don't know. So awkward. <laughs> it's going to be so. Well, now you awkward. think I was the one saying it was going to be awkward and now you're like Now I, I you hear that there's more people going from Nintendo. Right, we do keep hearing specific and names specific of people. Specific names. Like, oh. There are some names that make me a little bit more nervous than other names, let's be real. <laughs> And uh, I don't know. I don't want to have the interaction yeah. with some of these people. The whole no IT offense. department's going to be there. They want to talk to you. <laughs> They're like standing <laughs> with like a bat. <laughs> it's like that slow mo office space. Oh yeah, like beating up like a Wi Fi oh, hot that's pot, severe. That hot, hot spot. <laughs> that's a fax machine too. It's also a fax machine. That's right. Printer slash. Well, that's fax. severe. I don't think it's going to be like that. Hopefully not. Yeah. Hopefully. Okay. Not. Well, it's interesting. I'm getting really in real time. Your your emotions are just changing, Cir- <laughs> circling, swirling. I'm gonna be like this for the rest of the week. I'm just gonna give you that heads up. But you'll feel great once we're done with it. I'm I'm sure that's what you'll be. Okay. Yeah. Sure. The relief at, at a minimum relief. At a minimum. Right. Yeah. I'm really excited. I'm for excited it. to see Reggie. Yeah. I'm really excited to see. Maybe he can help me with through my panic. This might be a solo panel. If you can't, if you, you can't do it's it. It's you and Reggie instead. If you just, if you just run, you just run out the door. I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I can't do this. You know who can? Me. Oh, I'm going to okay. do it. Well, you can carry the show. I'll just but, sit there quietly. But for that um, live show, we're doing a very special story time. We are. About uh, a wild week that we spent with Hideki Kamiya. Yeah, at PAX. At PAX. When it was he, wild. When he visited for the wonderful 101. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, it was a long time with him, and we were with him like nonstop. Yeah, it was like every three three meals a day. Right. Not t- like eight a.m. Yeah. to ten p.m. every we, night. We got to know him <laughs> super well. It's awesome. Uh, and we're going to be telling you all about it at that PAX panel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's going to be fun. It's going to be some vibes sh- for sure. Yeah, that, yeah. That will come back. Right. Um, from that, the memory of that time with him. Yeah. Um, okay, the last thing that we want to talk about in this little intro that's getting yeah. very long is something that is kind of incredible. We've been working on this for a couple this, of weeks this now. Is, this is the highly very produced video. extremely ambitious video that we have been teasing. This is the, highly, the most highly produced episode of anything we've ever made. We've been working say. on this for weeks. We have. Yeah. And to do it just with the two of us, I think it's really... It's a great it, accomplishment. It's been, it's been right. really fun. And yeah, it is a great accomplishment. So we have decided to finally do this thing that we've been talking about for years. Literally now. years. Literally years, since like Splatoon 1 c- came out. But it is a Splatoon rap battle. Right. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, so the, the music of Splatoon is iconic. Yes. And... Ever since we, again, since the first game came out, it was like, you could probably write some pretty good raps with this music as the backdrop. Yeah. Um, the world is so interesting. Right. You could, like, really write about exactly the world of Splatoon in some interesting, fun ways. Right. right. So we would always like, oh, we're going to do this on Nintendo Minute. And everyone yeah. was like, yeah, that's a great idea. You should do it. But we never got around to actually doing and it. And I think we would have had some limitations. We probably would have. Yeah. They would like, have don't, been like, some... don't do that with the music. Or, or like, don't don't write it in this way. Right, right. You know, that this is not representative of the brand, whatever. Right. So I was kind of glad once we got into making it, making this episode of Super Kit and Chris's 64 with a Splatoon rap battle that like we just had like full creative freedom right. on this because you kind of need it to make this kind of video. Right. So we each wrote two raps um, one about Big Man which unfortunately lost the uh, Splatfest which we can talk about later. Bad Omen for you. Bad Omen. It was not for you. For you and me. You were also but, but, a Big Man stand. But that is what makes it a rap battle is that we are yeah. doing two takes on the same idea. Right, so it's Big Man and Turf War. We yes. each wrote one song for each theme. Right. And you guys, you out there, viewers, P- pick you the have winner. to vote. Right. We're going to show you how right. in the video. We also got some great help from our Patreon subscriber, Simon, who helped us handpick Simon. The, tr- the tracks to use for these. Got them on men. Um, uh, and snaps to Simon. Yes. So we've each, we each, all of these songs have a different backing track. It worked perfectly. It's really amazing. I couldn't believe yeah. how, like, as soon as I listened to those backing tracks and started, like, sort of, because we had already written part of our lyrics and stuff, but without the backing right, track. Right, right. We just wrote the, 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 the bars. Yeah. And then, and then we got the backing track, and yeah. I, was, I remember, like, just listening to it and kind of, like, mouthing the words, and I was like, oh, my gosh. It's like, a, it's, like it's meant to be. <laughs> how, how, how is this happening? It was crazy. Uh, it was a moment, yeah, you know? yeah. Big band, 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 big band. Yo, they call him the big man. The reason's cause he can drop the bars and the beats and the deadly like quicksand. Sucker MCs only last in one season if they don't look out. Look alive, look around, I'm a ghost in the ink. I'm coming for your crew, you better not blink. Do you know where you are? We're deep in a war. Defending our turf, I'm back to the core. And then... We also have full we music it, videos. We took it a step further. To accompany all of these. These in this, music videos yes, are That you'll something. be seeing in this episode. Yeah. So we have we have done all of your music videos. We are yeah. doing some of mine today and also tomorrow. Yeah, we got some lo- so, on loca- but, long on-location shoots. But happening. yours are done. Mine are done. I've seen them. They're incredible. They're so good. Your, your Turf War song is really good, Thank I have to you. say. I was really impressed. I like my Turf War song better than my Big yeah. Man song, I think. Yeah. I think your Big Man really song good. is really good. Oh, I think that oh. one is... I think that's going to win. It's a summer anthem. It really is. What it it is. Could, I was like, it could be on the, it literally <laughs> could be like Apple Music Top 10. Like, Whoa! I mean, move over, Drake. <laughs> wow. Okay. We don't care yeah. about your Lizzo, whatever. VMAs, you're getting wow. a VMA next year. Yeah. That was what you kept telling me when I was, you're like, you got to produce this audio. You got to make me sound like Lizzo. I'm like, I don't know what that, I don't <laughs> I know really what that means. Sound like Lizzo. <laughs> I don't <laughs> really know what that want... means. I'll do my best. <laughs> but it turned out nice. Yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah. The, the sound, it sounds good. The sounds really yeah. good. You didn't even have to auto to me or anything. No. Now, what are your rap influences? People need to know that. Well, I was a '90s baby, so well, I, yeah, we both were. Yeah, so I absolutely the heyday. Oh my gosh, '90s hip hop was like such my jam. Yeah, 
I um, once made you a playlist. It's for called when, Tough as Nails. I listen to it still. For when you went uh, on a trip to New York. I know. I was like really scared to be there by myself. So right. you made me a Tough as Nails playlist. Tough as Nails with some really like some hardcore, hard hardcore songs. stuff. Yeah. Some good stuff. There's some yeah. DMX on there. Right. It's very good. That's one of my influences. It's got some Wu Tang. Another one of my influences. Yeah. I like right. Snoop Dogg. I can tell by some of the lines that you I lifted. <laughs> use in there. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you creatively borrowed some creatively of borrowed his lines. I creatively borrowed some iconic Snoop Dogg lines. Right. I, I was a, a um, Notorious B.I.G. fan. Mm -hmm. A lot of these people are dead, which is kind of sad. Uh, Tupac. Yeah. You know, some good stuff. Right. LL Cool J. Is oh, LL Cool J. I love LL Cool J. Wow. Okay. I actually really like LL Cool J. He's I not dead. I can't say LL Cool J is one of my rap influences. I do like him. I do like Okay, I know he's a little bit like soft, soft rap, oh, cool. but I do like the bucket hat. Yeah. He was a hard hey, drop. He probably Come is. On. He probably still is a so big hard yeah. yeah. It's such a good, such a, it's such he's, a he's bop. In, he's in the Mario Lopez category where like he doesn't age and he's just perpetually jacked. He's just like adorable right. and handsome right. all the time. Yeah. Also... Uh, are, are great rap influences. I would I would read to you from this book called the Wu Tang Manual. That's right. As part That's of right. our professional <laughs> one on ones, and we I would, would do that a lot. I would send you passages from I think it I saw, as I, inspiration. I had a folder in my Nintendo email. It's probably gone now. Damn, I should have. Well, it's definitely it to gone myself, now. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Dang it! Um, I should have forwarded that folder to myself. Well, I saw that book, so they're all there. Oh, that's yeah. true. But no, the emails were good too. Okay. It's like the daily right Wu Tang wisdom. Yeah. Daily it's like wisdom. A, it's right. like one of those like uh, word of the day calendars, but instead of right. that, it was right. like Wu Tang. The wisdom. book is written by the RZA, who's kind of the mastermind of the Wu Tang oh Clan, Amazing. and it's it's just very good like life advice. It is right. So I would send you a snippet of those. I would, again, every day I would read through this book. To it's so good. Get prepared for my day, and I would send you these little passages. And then there was a there was a time where you used to send me snippets from co a coffee book about coffee. Oh, drinking. that's true. Yeah. 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 You were like my and then I ran out of material. <laughs> you were like this thing that I subscribe to. Like I subscribe yeah. to this like e this junk mail. Daily motivational my, my newsletter. Daily motivational quotes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> so this is going to be a really special episode. We hope you all check it out. And vote. Chickity check it out. Chickity check. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but also vote. Yeah. No, seriously though. Yeah, I need to do some some work yes. to finish up the episode after we do your music videos, right. but it's gonna be it's gonna be a good one. I can already tell. Well, uh, we just made it past the intro twenty minutes in, so we're off to sorry. a great start. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> All right, okay. Before we get into but, story time, thank you so much for sponsoring this video, Slick Deals. Love Slick Deals. We love you. We have heard good reviews from our followers that been yes. using Slick Deals. One of the best, you know, really awesome um, browser extension you can get. Just download it right away on your um, on your browser, or you can even download the app. Also an app, yes. Yep, and you can get it's just like combs the interwebs right. for deals for mm -hmm. coupons. You know, if you um, are buying something, it automatically scans to see if there's a coupon code available. I love that. Now, now when I'm yeah. buying anything, the, the little thing pops up. It's like, oh, there might be a deal. It might here. be a deal. That's a yeah. good feeling. That's yeah. a good deal. It, I mean, it's a good deal. It's a good feeling. <laughs> um, the other thing is they, they do send you some like good, like like hot, these are the hot deals of the right. week or something right. like that, which I always like look look at. We have been preparing to, like we were mentioning, go to PAX. Now we, we're going to meet with Reggie, so we need to get some we gotta more. got to gear up. Gear. Yeah. Exactly. So we were using that to, to buy some extra mics, to get all of our, you know, packs on the road filming gear. We're gonna vlog packs, so just getting like all of that stuff. Um, and this this stuff can be can be a little pricey, you know, and you wanna get good quality yeah. stuff. So it's great that um, I was able to use Slick Deals to get some really good discounts on it. Things are pricey, we're gonna talk about it later. Sony raised the price of the PS5 in mm -hmm. certain places. Stop no, it. say no to that. Use yeah. Slick Deals and yeah. say no. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> slick deals and I'm say getting no a slick to deal. Price increases. <laughs> Take price that. jacking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> where was I going with this? You can also set up some really good, good deal alerts. I did that last time price. and it was very nice. I was able to just wait a little bit and and get a, a let, pretty let good deal. Let the deal discount. come to you. That's right. Right. That's like that's some good Wu Tang life advice. Yeah. Let the deal come to you. Um, but yeah, you guys should definitely check it out. We will put all the links here. And thank you again to Slick Deals for sponsoring this episode. That's right. All right. We mentioned this was a PAX-heavy episode. Mm -hmm, so the story mm, time this mm. week is straight from PAX. 
straight from PAX to you. So this, you know what, before we get started with story time, I would like to say one thing about PAX. What? I'm concerned now. Really? Why are what are you going to say? I don't know. Well, I was just going to say that, you know, PAX is actually a very special time for you and I. I see. That's yes. where we became, like, actual friends. Right. Because before PAX, we were just, you know, we had just started working together. You had just started at Nintendo not too long ago. And as right. you had mentioned, from your own mouth, you kind of have this, like, you know, antisocial, right. cool kid exterior. Yeah. It's not a cool kid. It's called being antisocial. Well, it comes off as you being very, like, sometimes being a, a little bit, like, hard to approach, right? Right, right. And I, I remember, like, in the office, I kind of tried to talk to you, you know, like, I tried, I tried to talk to you a little bit more, and it was kind of hard to, like, get to know you. It was mm. like, I was like, I think there was, like, one moment where we had a good conversation over, like, Fable. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I feel like he's, like, nice. Like, I don't think, I think we have, like, some stuff in common. But it was, like, it wasn't until we went to PAX. We really got to know each other. Well, that's, I mean, we you're, you're going you're gonna to really find out if you like somebody or not when you're on a multi-day business trip with them. That's true. <laughs> and you're stuck with them that's for true. days at a time. We, you don't have to be stuck, though. Right. You don't have to be stuck. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but we ended up getting to know each other a lot more at PAX. Right. And it, again, it's a, it's a good environment because there's like so many things for you to talk about because you're like around. Right. Yeah. Video games right. and stuff that obviously we were both interested in. So it wasn't like weird, awkward, like, what do we talk about now? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we got to know each other really well, and, and uh, it was because of PAX. So I always remember PAX as like the beginning of our friendship. Wow. Which is kind of nice. That's great. So thanks, PAX, yeah. for facilitating this great, this great friendship. Wonderful. Yes. Um, but anyways, this PAX story was from, I think it was from our first PAX together. Yeah. 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 So this is... This Very early. Is the one right. uh, where we started to get to know each other better. We're working on this project, which you guys might remember, called Flipnote Studio. It was a 3DS thing. DS. DS thing. <laughs> wow. Is it really that old? Yes. Holy moly. It absolutely is. Um, <laughs> yeah, every year before we go to PAX, you know, there's some get together in the treehouse. We usually tell us, like, all right, here's the, yeah. you know, half dozen games that we're going to be pushing, and here's what we'll have on the show floor, and here's what we might want to do something a little extra with. Mm. And we would, but we would often get tasked with deciding, like, okay, wh what are you going to do cr that's creative and interesting? Yeah, like, what's the marketing with this other thing? thing? Yeah. And we did all sorts of fun things. Like, one time, one year when we had Metroid Other M. I love that we one. We did, like, a chalk art. A very large scale chalk art that this artist would do over a series of days. Yeah, so that every was day really you would come back see. and see it like progress. Right, right. But for this year, Flipnote Studio, we came up with kind of a bad idea. It was a bad idea. It, yeah, in hindsight, a really bad idea. And it was it was tough for us to execute. Right. But again, as well. this was this was kind of our first Nintendo PAX experience. So I think yeah. we were just feeling out of like, well, what can we do and what will work well? Mm -hmm. I'd been to PAX a couple times before. I had not. This was my first PAX like Namco. ever, I think. Yeah. But that was a very different experience yeah. where you're really like, I was basically like demonstrating stuff. Yeah. In the booth. So th this we had a bit more breathing room and it was like, oh, well, if you, you know, if you want to get this extra space, we can do that. Or if you want to go off the venue, we can look into that. So it was like, wow, we yeah. had a lot of options. Yeah. The events team is really, really yeah. good at PAX, right. obviously. They right. built these cool, you know, and, and it got more elaborate over the years, like, Goodness, that, that Animal Crossing booth that the last pack. Oh, yeah. We Museum were, quality. Uh, amazing. Um, but this was still kind of early days, like you were saying. We were, like, Nintendo was still feeling out the show. We were still, like, as a, you know, communications team feeling out what, what it is that we can do that would fit into, like, what people expect at PAX. Right. And, and th at that time, we weren't doing any sort of things like panels and stuff like that, because that was, like... no. That was kind of like off the table, even though that was right. a more natural right. fit. Right. So the idea we came up with was to do this like live. It's like a live infomercial. It was basically like yeah, exactly, yeah. like a live demo, live infomercial, um, sort of at a not at the Nintendo booth though. It was like in this other location, like in right. the common sort of the air, the atrium area where people were like walking through different things. Yeah, if you've ever been to. PAX, <clears throat> it's on the main floor, but it's a bit out of the way, and it's a large open area. There's a lot of, like, 
plants there. Yeah, there's like a, kind of like but a that, skylight. Yeah, but if you're going dealing. up to the top floor, that's where you take those really big escalators to yep. go up. And some now they sell like a lot of merch there. Mm -hmm. um, but back then, it was kind of, I mean, this was kind of like the first error we, we made was like, we were kind of sold of like, oh, there's a lot of foot traffic here. There, there, will, will, there at, really wasn't. At that year, there really wasn't. Yeah, it was um, very sparsely right. populated. But we I had, you know, a little spot where we had kind of a mini booth <laughs> where we had, you know, the game that was hooked up to a TV and people could see, you know, what was happening or you could run a video. Yeah. And then, you know, a big, a big microphone for us to give our whole spiel. Yeah, it was very awkward and like really kind of just, you kind of got the sense right away that this is really not that interesting to people. Yeah, it was it, it was absolutely an idea that sounded fine on paper, but like the moment you got there, you're like, oh, it's dumb. Yeah, and you feel really dumb right. too. Because it was basically us doing just kind of like an off the cuff, like, you know, demo or sales pitch for Flipnote Studio right. for like 10 minutes at a time. Yeah. Yeah. But you you also like had to, you feel, felt the need to fill the dead silence. At like, a certain point, there's only so much you can say about Flip Studio. See, you, you gave up really fast. Yeah, I did. I tried really hard yeah. to like keep going. So there were three of us who were doing this. It was you, me, and the wonderful Rich Amtower. Oh my God, Rich Amtower is such of a Nintendo gem. Treehouse localization. And he was like, gave who we, his who weekend we love, time. Who we love and adore. Yeah, I love Rich We had Amtower. also recruited some legit artists to come to PAX yeah, and to do draw. Dem like comic book artists. Yeah. Um, to do, you know, live drawing live drawing live yeah. animations in yeah. footnote studio and use the, the, the so that was a good whatever. way to fill yeah. out some time but i i did like one or two of those and i kind of saw like nobody was really clicking with this and i was like i'm just going to stop doing this i didn't stop until because <laughs> i thought that i had to do it like you didn't never you never voiced that i could stop <laughs> so i just kept going like a like a loser and i was just like in the microphone this is again maybe this is adds to my pax panic oh no because i had a bad experience it was like but you just stand up there in the middle in this open area right. and you're just like, let's look at this Flipnote so, Studio. Flipnote, Flipnote Studio, Studio is some great new software that is available for Nintendo DS yeah. family of systems. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's launched now. You can use the stylus. Legals, on the legals touch watching like in one of those bushes with like, yeah, a, a, like, with like a blow gun. Yeah. <laughs> they're gonna take you, <laughs> they're gonna take you down if you don't say if family you don't of say systems. Nintendo 3DS family <laughs> the of systems. The DS! Oh, it's sorry. not the three. <laughs> oh no! Don't talk about. You talk about Flipnote Studio 3D. People are going to get worked up. Oh, yeah. that has a. That's a sad story. Flipnote Studio Switch. Do not talk about 3D version of Flipnote Studio. That's a sad story. Yikes! Sorry, that was a sad. Story. Get it straight. Okay. DS. DS. Um, but it was so awkward. It was just like it was painful. Rich M Tower probably did the best job. Of the three of us? He did the best job because he knew, he knew it the, the most. Yeah, he had worked on that. Yeah, he, so he had like actual things to say. Right. What did I had to say? Right. Launch date? And it, it, <laughs> was, it was interesting to watch those artists do something. The thing was cool. It probably should have just been a full schedule of that without the infomercial. Or it could have just been a video that you just run. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been so much Whatever. easier. But, but, it but was by the not. end of it, we had completely abandoned it and it was just like looping it. That's what it was by the end. It was like, forget this. I think I think we, we made a valiant effort the first day. Yeah. The second day is when you came you I remember this moment so clearly. I was like doing it. <laughs> and you were like, you know, you can stop. Pointing and laughing. <laughs> Heckling. <laughs> you like throwing a tomato at me. Flip this. <laughs> And then we became best yeah. friends. <laughs> no, but you came, you literally came over to me like you like tapped me on the shoulder. Yeah. You're like you can you can stop if you want. I was like well, really. The, the whole every time, literally nobody would stop or like pay attention. It was just like you might as well have been doing it like into the void. So I was like, we gotta stop doing. I was this. like, oh, I can. I didn't know that. I don't think I, I told Rich Amter though. He kept showing up, but he did great. <laughs> he didn't tell yeah. Rich Amter he could stop. No. Oh no. <laughs> Yeah, he, he did, I think he, he was only available like the first two days. Like oh. he was like, I'm not staying for like the third day. Well, great. Then it worked out for and everybody. And then the third day we were yeah. just like, let's not do this anymore. I mean, no look, the last, the last days of PAX are real rough. And now they've, now they've made the show longer. Four days now, huh? That was always a real concern when they extended it by another day. It's like, are we going to have to stay for that? Because I don't want to. And it's always over a long, like a it's, holiday it, weekend. It it's like this I can get, year. I can at least get one weekend day in because yeah. of this holiday. Monday and now off. We, we never... We, we always made the executive decision, like, we got to go. You can't do that. That's too long But the people week. who are working the booth, like, that's, that's rough. rough. That's really rough. That is rough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyways, that was probably our worst idea at PAX yeah. that we've ever done. But ever, after that, 
subsequent years, we had really good ideas for yes. PACs, and they were always ended right. up being much better than that. But we'll always remember the awkward, the awkwardness of doing the live Flipnote studio demos. If you were at PAX and you remember us oh, standing up, if there, anybody saw that, is there like some video circulating of you doing a Flipnote studio demo? <laughs> that would be some crazy. Somebody's gonna send that to you this like Saturday morning to send you into a spiral before we've got to do all this stuff. And then I'm gonna literally yeah. not show up. Just lock my You're door. You're gonna ghost Reggie? No, I'm not gonna ghost Again, Reggie. Again, I can do it all myself. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie and I will have a great time. Oh, I would never. Uh, Maybe Reggie remembers his Flipnote Studio nonsense. He wasn't there. He didn't see that. This is okay. Yeah, oh. but he might remember. All right, something uh, about it. we can uh, recover you from this uh, shame spiral by changing the subject, <laughs> which is our never a minute segment. Which is also about packs, unfortunately. Well, and fortunately, this is going to be more fun, I think. Okay, so we have a fun. Would you rather packs edition? Um, would uh, never a minute segment? Right. We I come up with three. We've yes? been just yes. We've been to so many pack shows. Yep. It, we, we know the ins and outs, all the little details. Um, I So I anticipated that you were going to jump on some of the low-hanging fruit. I'm going to jump on the low-hanging oh, fruit. Yeah. So I, mine are a bit more high level, Oh, I think. good. Because yes. you knew what I was going to do. <laughs> I mean, I there's feel... definitely something about a beanbag. That's Isn't like the it... first one. Okay, okay. <laughs> so... do, you, do you want to lick a beanbag? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so can I go first? Yes, please go first. Would you rather eat a Pax Subway sandwich? Oh, I have that at two. Every day. Every day. Uh -huh. Or have your bed be the Pax bean this is so, so this is almost exactly what I wrote. Are you serious? So let me read you, you what I wrote. This is low well, fruit. Well, it, it, they get a bit more high concept from there. Would you rather eat the convention center Subway three meals a day or take a Pax bean bag home and use it as a pillow in your own bed for the next year? <laughs> oh so, my God. So we basically wrote the exact same thing. So, I guess, so I guess we can both we can answer both that. We can both answer one. it. Yeah, it nullifies itself out. That is so crazy that we wrote the same thing. Yeah, I'd rather eat the subway, even though it's gross. I'd rather go to the. I'd rather have the beanbag as a bed. No, you would not. I would. I can't Ew. eat that sandwich. That smells so bad. So, so we should say in the convention center. There's, you there, would eat the sandwich. There's very few food options in the convention center. Yeah. Um, one is a subway sandwich. Which is right smack dab in the middle of all these like escalators. It just it doesn't smell right. No, it's it might be like close to some bathrooms, which maybe is contributing Ew. to the stink. You think I don't know. That's what it is. But you can smell it from really far away is a thing too. Right. It's like a really unpleasant it doesn't smell like food. No. It smells like something else. Like it smells like Yeah. It doesn't smell like like natural. I mean people people now debate like is what Subway serves actually, like there was like, is the tuna actually tuna? And then the people like, the bread is not actually bread. That's what I'm thinking, that's what I'm right. thinking. Like it kind of smells like very synthetic. Right. Like it doesn't smell like real food or anything right. like that. Um, so I, I don't think I can eat that. But okay, this the, is my, so, but, listen. Well, but let's also explain the bean bags in case oh, people have okay, not okay. been to a The pass. plopping though. <laughs> Please explain. Plop. They, they do. I don't know if they have that now in the post. Yeah, maybe maybe era. not now. We should, we should look and we'll find out. In the out. classic PAX era, though. In the classic PAX era, they used to have these areas where, this is a good idea in concept again, but not in practice. They had these areas where they would have these huge bean bags. You could just hang out there. Right. And and just. It was like, oh, you know, play play a game play a together game. or just yeah. rest. Or... They're, they're kind of in between the floors. Yeah. Um, we, when we were at Nintendo, actually like sponsored one of the beanbag lounges one year with a Kirby beanbag. Yeah. Yes. This is my, like another pack story. Um, and so we, we had like these pink beanbags right. and blah, blah. And um, there was some kerfuffle about but, that. But one of our executives yeah. had a very strong opinion about these beanbags. He bags. did. And he did not like them. He did not like because them. Because he thought people just went there to like crash out. And so if you put anything there, like nobody could ever get to it because you'd have all these crashed out people in right. the way. Or of they, the games, right. or they'll never leave, right. they'll never turn like this, over this was like This was like an ongoing series of meetings where this person would rant about beanbags. Yeah, you. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Surprisingly, this is the same person that had a problem with me. But so. um, there seemed to be an unsanitary element to the beanbags. Like if you That's took right. a black light to these beanbags, you might what not would you find? like what you saw. Yeah. And it's, it's very, it's communal. So there's, you right. know, the, the person, people are sharing this. And it's true. You might see somebody like asleep 
on yeah. a beanbag or somebody who really looks like they've been there for hours. I may have seen one or two romantic encounters happening That's on a beanbag. That's true. There a was a lot of romantic encounters. Um, so I've seen it all with these beanbags. Here is my logic, though. Okay. I can take the beanbag home and, like, sanitize it a lot. Oh, that's not how I envision this. It's like as is. You have to put that. You right didn't in your put bag. that in. As is. You didn't put that well, in. Well, fine, a whatever. Caveat. Well, then I'm gonna eat the sandwich, and you're gonna eat the beanbag. I'm not gonna eat. Or the you're, gonna, you're gonna sleep on the beanbag. <laughs> Boil those beans and eat them. <laughs> those are good beans inside. <laughs> Don't waste food. I'm not gonna eat a beanbag, and you're not gonna sleep on a sandwich. Okay. <laughs> that should be a bet we make. If you if this doesn't happen, you have to eat the beanbag. You have like, to sleep on the sandwich. I'll eat my shoe. You, have to, you, you can use a sandwich as that pillow. Ew. A mayonnaise sandwich. Is a pillow. See, you don't want that. You can now, ask do you? for no mayonnaise, and then you can watch them. You can. Uh, that's that's one pro of. It's one of the few pros of subways. I can watch you like a hawk. <laughs> do not put any mayonnaise on that sandwich. Okay. Well, then we have different different right. opinions. on Interesting this. start to this. What's your next one? Would you rather wear the Pax Enforcer kilt? Oh, to an utility kilt. Utility kilt to an important business meeting. Okay. Or perform a song. You know how they used to do the musical things on the main stage. I'll wear the kilt, gladly. For, to an important business meeting? I think those are cool, yeah. To an important business meeting? I mean, how important is it? Let's say, I don't know, very important. Let's just I say think it's like very a, professional. I mean, kilt? At Wall Street level. We, we have um, a Patreon subscriber from Scotland who I think will set you straight and say that's actually quite formal attire. But the, the PAX version of so it? So what? Yes. The PAX version is not an actual kilt. Like not I, don't, a I don't care. I don't care. This is, I don't care. This is my choice. The tartan. I'm doing that. I mean, do these do these splatoon wraps on the main stage? That could be cool too. But the I, I think the kilt is cool. All right. I have I'm, I have no aversion to that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Would you rather? Uh huh. Okay. So the, this is either you're driving home from the show with one of these two people. <gasps> Driving. I don't want to. How long to. is that? Like 12 hours, 15 hours? That's a, Seattle from to, Seattle to, San, to Francisco? San Francisco? That's a long haul. Oh, gosh. All right. Would you rather drive home after the show with the Mad Cats Smashing Pumpkins guy? Oh, I love that guy. To set up for that. Years ago, Mad Cats had a booth for like, they had some rock band accessories. I love that and guy. And they had a guy who was up there singing for basically three days straight, by the end, looked like he had seen enough of life and was ready to just pack it in. <laughs> Billy Corgan got to him. He had a true, like, d he had dead eyes, basically. I felt really bad for him towards yeah. the end. In the beginning, that was good, though. Yeah. That was a, that's I mean, a good they're, song. They're playing a great song. That's a great song. Cherub Rock by Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah. yeah. But by the end, like a banger. the passion, his passion was gone. So that's. He, he probably spent the night. But listen. Like, he's, in a dark hotel room listen. somewhere. On that ride home, you crank the radio. He's going to want to sing, okay? So you like need this. to consider that. I actually or, already like this. Or would you rather drive home from PAX with Dan Edelman, but he insists on stopping at Starbucks every 30 minutes? <laughs> okay. So another insight, another insight, another insight joke. This. Dan Edelman <laughs> used to be the indie guy at Nintendo. Oh, um, my God. You saw him at PAX getting a really incredible Starbucks order. I could not believe it. Please this. explain what it was. He got... A Trenti black, like black coffee with eight espresso shots. <laughs> oh I think there may have also been some sort of syrup added I to fear it. for his life. And I'm like, your heart is going to explode. So on this, out of your so on chest. this ride home, every thirty minutes, he's getting another one of those. I'm definitely going with the Mac Cat. <laughs> First of all, you drink that much coffee, you're gonna have to pee. You're gonna, yeah, well, every thirty minutes, you can get you can pee and you get another coffee. <laughs> I can't. He's not yeah. gonna, I'm not going to drive him to the hospital no. at the end of that. There's no way you can make it to San Francisco. Stopping every 30 minutes for coffee. Yeah. The Mad Cats guy is okay. Okay. Yeah, he can, he can become reinvigorated on the drive Maybe home. Maybe I just listen, let him listen to something else. He could get, he could get his zest for life back. That's right. Yeah. We'll, we'll put together a playlist. He playlist. seemed like a fun guy, but again, by the end, he, he was I just... I felt real bad he was just He just needed a break. But I really liked that song. Yeah. And I was like... Yeah. I was happy to hear it. Okay. Even though he was saying kind of badly. By this guy. All right. All right. Here's my last one. Yes. Would you, this is back to this flip note demo. Would you rather do, uh, oh, sorry. Would you rather have to do the flip note studio demo 40 hours a week oh, oh, or man. have your new full time job be to do PAX booth setup? Oh. Um, PAX booth setup is hard. So I just do the setup? Yeah, you have to like make I'll, the booth. I'll do that. Really? Yeah. I mean, that's not for, uh, that has a beginning and an end. 
You know, it's like we built the booth. Listen, Every day. Listen, when I worked for these other companies before Nintendo, I had to do that. I would have to like t have boxes in my hotel room and carry them to the convention center. You got this silver spoon working at Nintendo for 14 years and didn't have to do anything. I was toiling away carrying boxes, loading, at, like shaking people down at the office. Hey, do you have a 360 debug? I need that. Oh. You don't understand. I've been there. I've done that. I've gotten my hands dirty. I've what have you done? Dirty. I wasn't doing a football <laughs> studio demo for no one. With Rich Am Tower. You don't understand. My hands the, are the, filthy. The plight. <laughs> I'll do that. Uh, um, that wasn't hard at all. I yeah. don't think I can build that, but that was right. hard. This, this next, this is my last one. This involves an early wake-up call. Uh -huh. Would you rather wake up at 5 a.m. to do a live local news segment <laughs> for Seattle News? Oh, no. Or would you rather wake up at 5 a.m. to drive a surly Hideki Kami out of the airport? I'd rather drive Hideki Kami He is extremely airport. surly. He is surly in the morning. Yeah. You can't be late. No. He'll be mad. He is surly. I'll meet him at 4.30 a.m. So you'll do that? Yes, All right. absolutely. Maybe he'll just like, you just don't talk to each other. Maybe I can get him the carbonara on the way there. And maybe, he can, he don't can just... spoil the story, first of all. Okay. Maybe maybe it's you just, a teaser. if you want people to come to the panel, don't spoil the story. It's a teaser. Oh my gosh. You're going to do this to yourself now. It's a carbonara appetizer, as it were. <laughs> um, the, yeah. th the threat of the 5 a.m. local news hit was always was looming, looming at these over shows. Us. It was like looming hardcore. I don't know. They, they might need somebody to do this at five in the morning. It might be you. Oh, don't act up, or it might be, be you. It never, I it can't never was us. Do it. I never we had somebody it. who was an ace at this kind of stuff and didn't seem to mind waking up at he 5 a.m. Best. So it was always like, please, just let him. David do it. will do this. David will nail it. Yeah. Don't even. Don't ask. Don't us. even ask us. Unless, don't call me. Right. I won't be awake. Right. I won't be ready, okay? <laughs> I won't. You guys know I am not a morning person, judging by my reaction videos at 6 a.m. Imagine me doing that at 5 a.m. Oh, on no. the no local news. That's not going to go down yeah. well. For well what Nintendo. can you tell us about the new Mario game? I don't know. It sucks. Shut up. That's what I can tell you. What do you got to tell me? Give me some coffee. <laughs> you need the Dan Edelman drink. No. At 5 Maybe at 5 a.m. I'm going to say, I experienced, this weekend, I may have realized that I'm over-caffeinating myself. You said that you had a bad headache I for had, like a month. I, I had a bad headache for basically all of last week. Oh, a week. And I was like, what's going on here? And it was like, I, I think I'm over-caffeinated and... You said you drink three cups of coffee a day? And dehydrated, too. And I've scaled back for the last couple of days. I feel great. Wait, so how many cups of coffee were you drinking a day? Well, I used to drink three. Oh, that's quite a lot. And now, and, the, and then I downgraded to two cups of tea. So I don't want to just go to zero because that's how you. No, you you yeah, can't you do like, that. You can. Oh, you're not make having any coffee at all now. I had one this morning because we got to do this podcast. I feel fine. I think it's that third one though. The third cup. When that's, are you drinking the third that's, cup that's of coffee? That's really like an emergency situation now. So now I'll have one in the morning. I'll have one after we're done with this. It'll be nice. That's the that's the normal thing that I do. Right. Well, don't you can't decide what's normal. Okay. How dare you? But when was when is the third cup happening? I'm I'm confused by this. I'm gonna have one like early morning or later morning. Oh, later morning. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't do that. All right, it's too much coffee. Well, you're also quite small <laughs> as a person. <laughs> well, I'm not drinking like the 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 Trenti. <laughs> the Trenti with eight shots. Why does that size exist? First of all, I want to know that. First, I yeah. want to know. They don't advert. That's kind of like the secret menu at In and Out. You don't. They don't, they don't, they don't advertise, advertise They don't advertise yeah. But you can do it, clearly. You can get a trench with eight espresso shots and like 14 pumps that's, of syrup. That's the Edelman. Shout that's out to Edelman. Dan Edelman. Sh yeah. Snaps to you too, Dan Edelman. Oh, boy. Oh, man. <clears throat> okay. Games we are playing. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is at the end. You can, you can close out this segment here. Oh, my gosh. Splatoon 3 test fire, though. We had a good time with it. We did. Yeah. We did. This this test fire was really fun, and it definitely gave me, it reminded me oh. of how how fun Splatoon is, really. Oh, yeah. It's like when everyone is playing, when everybody is talking about it, yeah. when all your friends are playing, even though we can play together this time, but when all your friends are playing, um, it is such a cool, you know, it's just such a fun game for that aspect. And it, since it's been so long since that happened, I, I kind of forgot that feeling. And it was nice that the test fire... Hmm. Passion re rekindled. Invigorated wow. that. All right. Um, but yeah, I had, I had a fun time. I definitely did not really do very well. No. At all. I think I won like four Can or you explain to the good people your play setup <laughs> for Splatoon? Because it's, it's, it's one of a kind. I think 
it works please really ex- well. Please explain it. So I I have the um, I like the the motion controls for aiming, motion aiming. So I like to play in tabletop mode. So I usually have the Joy-Con. I hold the Joy-Con separately, not in a controller, because I like having the independent. Like this is the hand to aim and this sure. is the hand to move around, like have that be independent. So that's why you would not use a pro controller. I don't want to use a pro controller. Okay. Yeah. And then um, the the uh, the console part of it, like the screen, like, you know, it just needs to be like eye level for me. So sometimes I like play on the couch and I like stack up a bunch of pillows or something <laughs> so that it's just when I'm sitting down, it's like eye level. You okay. know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. That's how I like to do. That's how I like to do it. And then when you're in the bed, if you're playing in bed, you can also do the same. You can like sit up, sit up, but just stack up the pillows. Yeah. And then have it be like eye level to you. It's really comfortable. It's a good way to play. You should try it. And Why don't you like? You this? need to make some sort of an apparatus. It's, it's almost like a VR headset where you can just have the oh, switch have it, like, hang suspended over me. from your head. That's so true. that it's just there, and you can play it wherever you want. That'd be cool. You can just sit on the couch. Forget these pillows. I like the pillows, yeah. though. When do we get the branded Krista Splatoon pillow? Yeah, you can have that. Well, what? Are you going to make it? or oh, like sure. what? I will make like it. Like, this This is made to my personal specifications? Your, my to, own height? To not have your switch fall over? or. But then you might be not, not be high. <laughs> I don't know. A switch on a pillow seems very precarious. Like, if you move it all, it's going to, like, <laughs> jostle. You just fall over. It doesn't. It's very secure. Okay. But, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's a really great way to play. I encourage others to try it. <laughs> it is very nice to have the two independent hands. Okay. With the Joy-Con. Maybe you can maybe you can film a short little video of this. Okay. I think I think everybody would love to see. Parties this. are interested. Yeah. It's because I use dualies too. <laughs> what do the dualies have to do with it? I just feel like I have two hands. The dual- I need a pillow for the dualies. The, the papers. <laughs> Stop are dropping your paper. You need pillows though. for your papers. I need apparently. papers. Um, pillows and papers. But like, if it feels like you know, you're like you you have the freedom to move around, you know, with the hands and the dualies. Is this like the equivalent of a treadmill desk? Is this the video game equivalent of that? Because if so, that's a little no, annoying. No, because I'm not moving around. You just said you need the freedom to move around. My arms, though. Okay. Not like my legs. Maybe you could do it on a treadmill too and get the full. I'm like running the down the experience. treadmill yeah, with yeah. like a full sprint, dead sprint. <laughs> These doolies flailing around. From a kid to Pillows. a squid. Just you got a pillow here. <laughs> <laughs> you got a pillow there. <laughs> I think it's good. Well, that's I like unique. It. Great. It's, How do you play? I just just with the controller. But you play TV mode with a. I'm gonna pl- play however I need to. But yeah, I was and that's why I was playing on the TV with a pro controller. Pro controller. Motion but you con- you do, do motion controls. Motion controls are great. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't course. like that. All right. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's. I think people should try it. Well, again, please share a short video. I will share let, a tutorial, let, let a how-to, a tips yes. and tricks. Great. Um, it was interesting to see, you know, now that we got our hands on it, just some little details that were, yeah. were visibly different from Splatoon 2. Sure. Since that had been on our mind of, like, how different is this going to be. Yeah. I think a lot of people pointed out it does, it does look Looks very nice. It looks great. It looks great. Um, it is a step up. Yeah, graphically from, uh, for sure. Splatoon two. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely agree. The new weapons are fun. We tried out yeah. the bow and arrow. One. I, re- I really like that. That one was really cool. Yeah. The windshield wiper. The splatana. The splatana was very cool. I didn't feel like I properly got the hang of. Yeah, it. it's fun to play around with them for yure yeah. and like check them out. It felt like I know. could get. It was good for getting stuff a bit further away, but sometimes I was like trying to just ink. The floor, and it wasn't as mm, effective for that. It wasn't that. as accurate, yeah. yeah. It does, like, have a good, um, like, a wide yeah. range. and you could charge it up. Yep, and yeah. so if you wanted to, like, splat the other team, it's easier because you don't have to aim as yeah. much. That's what I like. I like, I got bad aim, so I need, oh, to, yeah. I need a weapon that can help me with yeah. that. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but both of those were really right. inventive and really fun, and the new stages looked really good. Yeah, yeah the new stages were yeah, great. Yeah, really cool. Mm-hmm. I really like that. Um, the tricolor turf war. Con- I was very confused by this because I didn't. I don't think I understood how it worked when I was playing it. So uh, I, I, I was team scissors. You were also team. Scissors. Of course, the right choice. Yeah, right choice. Um, and we. So I guess maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not understanding it correctly. But my 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 understanding is is that when you are the team in the lead, the two other teams 
play, the points play against you or something. I mean, you just need to have the most area covered. And you have to do the thing with the the little trophy or whatever it's called. It's definitely hectic. It's very hectic. No, but the way the points work is different as well. Okay. Yeah. Is the is what I think caused scissors to lose. Well, I was getting spawn camp constantly, so you were? <laughs> maybe I didn't completely grasp the full scope of it. Oh. Um, I can I can understand now why they're putting that strictly in Splatfest, mm-hmm. so that because I, I feel like it might wear out its welcome quicker than other modes. Yeah. But in a short, you know, if you're playing it for just a day, or even in this one, they, they really had it loaded into the second half of the day. Yeah, and it was also chance. Like, if you were yeah. on the winning team, you can't pick that mode. It just randomly yeah. appears Yeah, we just randomly you. pick it. So, Which is I, weird. I, I, I can understand why. Well, we'll see how much they integrate it into yeah, I'm future confused. I'm a little confused by it, honestly. Yeah, but like, it, seemed really like, it seemed by like it. the consensus was we're still feeling this out from the people who had played. Like, yeah. not, not sure I totally love this yet. Yeah, and there's like definitely some balancing things that maybe need to happen. Yeah. People are very passionate about this. Right. Somehow. Right. It's a, <laughs> very competitive. Like. Yeah. Were you getting a lot of disconnects? We saw a lot of people saying that too. Yeah. I didn't really have any disconnects. I, had, I definitely had. Uh, we amount. tried to get into a game as a, as a party of two once work. and we couldn't get into a game. We couldn't match me at all. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your, thought, little, your little ghost did show up in my I know. hub, which was, that was neat. cute. Yeah. I like did that. You, did you pick an octoling or a? No. Inkling. Oh, you picked an inkling. Yeah. I picked an octa. Yeah. Um, I also, yeah, I definitely had some matchmaking problems earlier in the day mm. where it would just, yeah, it would just yeah. like kind of tr- sit on that matchmaking yeah. screen. I didn't look too deeply into that. I mean, yeah. part of the reason they do this is to, work, to out, work out some of the kinks. Yeah, exactly. It was a couple um, of disconnects, but I still got into a fair amount of games and I was able to play through those. Yeah. Which was, which yeah. Was I mean, there's only so much you can change like two weeks out, but... Um, I'm joking. I'm, hopefully, the, the full version has a, has a little bit more stability to it. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah but it, it seemed like everybody liked it, you know, yeah. and, and enjoyed it. Did um, this, I mean, how did this impact your overall opinion of Splatoon 3 now that you had a chance to play it? Um, I mean, it, again, it reminded me how fun this game is, yeah. regardless of how, whether or not it's completely different or a real significant step from Splatoon 2. Um, it is just such a fun game, you know. I'm, yeah. I'm definitely going to buy it and play right. it. Um, I still stand by my opinion that, like, while it looked better and there's some good quality of life changes, I still don't see that big of a difference between two and three. Yeah, yeah, um, I'm, I'm still the same way, and I'm, I'm not like living or dying with it or anything. I'm definitely, right. I'm definitely buying this game, and I'll yeah. definitely have fun with it. But, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it's just you know. Need time to come to grips with what this game is, and you know maybe it's not exactly what you would have wanted, but, right. um, it's, but still, it's still fun. It's still very fun, as, as I said. Maybe maybe on my top games of the year list. Yeah, yeah, it's still really fun. It's still yeah. really a, a unique experience um, for you to do with your friend. Yeah, play with your and friends. no matter what I'm playing on September eighth, that game's getting dropped. Come September. There 9th. you go. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Because I mean, again, it's going to be like the game of the moment. Everyone's going to talk about it. Everyone's yeah. going to be want to be playing together. Like yeah. you want to be part of that, you right, know? And, right. and so I, I totally I do really love just it. like the look in the vibe in the plaza during the splat. Fest. Yes. So it has like, those, like the Japanese everywhere. festival vibe And to they're it. performing up above. And, yeah. And they're like broadcasting that in all these different it's places. Really cool. it's, it's People's it's really artwork. Special. Always incredible. Another question from you. Yeah. I was like, how do people draw all the amazing things? Yeah. And there were so many different answers that I got like some people say you can like basically like upload an image to it um there's apparently a pen stylus like a that stylus, you can yeah. get for your switch that was for the game like colors that well you my... have you have a stylus for, does it work for on Mario my... Maker does it work on my switch you think you got that for Mario Maker. oh yeah yeah you got that. You get. You got yeah. that for me. Oh, I we still both have, have that. It. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I need to dig that up. So I guess. What are you gonna do though? You, you've been asking around this. It seems like you have some grand idea. I just want to draw something. Kit for and Krista. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> just like the logo. Yeah. No, I think it's cute. But people yeah. are so creative. So people are amazing. On amazing. That. Yeah. yeah. Right. Such cool. Such cool. Like artwork. Yeah. Also some some good trolls. Yes. <laughs> like what is the deal with like welcome home cheater? Like why is that like a thing? I'm confused by that, but it's like kind of funny. That could be a that could be a, a video idea. Dig into the the memes of of the Splatoon 
you know? Yeah. What do they post on? What are your best memes yeah. from from the Splatoon Plaza? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, like it's weird when things like start to kind of quote unquote. It's like social media almost right. like such a like trend or yeah. go viral yeah. or whatever yeah. on yeah. on the. It's got platform specific trends. That's right. Right. Apparently, yeah. Welcome Home Cheater is one of them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, yeah, but overall. It looks really good. I'm definitely going to get the, the game when it comes out. And yeah, we'll. Yeah. I'm sure we'll all have a lot of fun playing it, mm -hmm. you know? We'll see. There, there's going to be, you know, DLC and yeah, yeah. loads of other stuff. So we'll right. see how it goes. Right. I'm, I'm going to play the single player mode too and, you know, check that out. So yeah, it should be good. Okay. Uh, Cowabunga Collection. Mm -hmm. As we noted, um, good guy Chris Kohler. Got us some codes for that. Yes. And uh, I spent a good chunk of the weekend playing through that. Yeah. And it is really great. It is really good. Um, kind of my, my take on this is the games in the collection are not perfect. They all have some flaws to them. But I really cannot imagine a better package, a better presentation. Seriously. How, how else are you going to get all these like games together in one right, place? Right, right. Where it's easy for you to play again. Right. So it covers the NES games. Up through kind of you know Genesis, SNES, um, and also a couple arcade games as well. Also Game Boy games, which are interesting. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of games in there, and I played through. I played through the ones that I kind of had like memories, you know, me with. memories of, yeah. and, and it was interesting where some of them held up more or less because I always thought like, oh, you know, I didn't love the NES version of the arcade game. Mm. I always thought that was a little disappointing, but I, the game after that, the Manhattan Project, I was like, all right, that's where they kind of nailed that. And I went back and played that. I was like, eh, this, is, wasn't the, this was, doesn't, this doesn't work so well yeah. as I'd like. But I did play through the whole, the arcade game beginning to end. That one is really good. Can you imagine and, how many quarters you would have burned yeah. playing uh, well, that from beginning to end? Well, I counted. Did you count how many well, I mean, lives? You can give yourself unlimited credits. Yeah. That. You can just jam, cow, 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 <laughs> Um It was like 70 something. Oh, wow. Quarters. That game's cheap. Like, I'm, I'm, or is it expensive? I'm not going to try and defend it. All those Konami beat em ups were like that, where yeah. you could never get in a clean series of hits. They would always, like, like the, somehow the get Simpsons you. Simpsons would do this, the X Men would that do this. That game is another one that I remember in the arcade, right. I remember burning a lot yeah. of money on that. And there were yeah. a lot of times where, especially later on, like, you just stand up, you get beat up, fall down, you, you like, get stuck in a corner. Right. There's and no there's, way and you there's can There's nothing get you can do. Through it. But yeah. now that I have unlimited quarters, like, whatever. I'm, I'm just trying Fake to. Quarters. I'm just trying to, you know, enjoy getting through this. So mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not like annoyed or stressed out about it. Yeah. That game does make me. You know, we played um, Shredder's Revenge. Right. Earlier this summer, and it did. It did make me kind of revisit my thoughts on that because mm -hmm. that game, even more than I thought, really pulls a lot from the arcade game. That, that's. It was like so clever right. the way they did that. You know how in like music they don't, they have like sound alikes right where it's like. We're making a song that's different, but it sounds a lot like this song you know. Right. That's kind of how I view that game yeah, now. Yeah, there's like this familiarity to it. That's yeah. not like they copied the original game. Right. But they just pulled out the essential things, the qualities right. of what made that game what it is. Yeah. And they were able to like modernize it and put it in this new Right, game. but even yeah. like the progression of the stages, like... It's like, oh, we're starting in this office, and then we're going to the streets, and yeah, eventually exactly. we're in the Technodrome, and like, kind of the place, like the different bosses that they use. And I remember, it's like you're telling a Ninja Turtles story. It's gonna, you know, be like those. Classic you, you can bosses. predict how it's gonna play out, but mm -hmm. there was more than I had remembered being pulled directly from the right. arcade game. That arcade game still holds up really it, well. It really does, especially if you have you know multiplayer. And I haven't had a chance to try that online for this. I'm really excited to, um, but. The look of it, like, again, I don't know if I have rose-colored glasses, but if you put that game out today, I still think that game would look great. I mean... All the characters are really big and colorful and well-animated. There's, yeah. like, a lot going on. There's, like, all these interesting stage progressions and right. interactive and that's, things that you can And that's do. why this game blew my mind back in, you know, 19-whatever. Because I was yeah. like, I've never seen a game that looks Look like, that. like this and this, you know, accurate to the source material. Right. Um, so that was great. I, of course, I also went back. The game I really do want to give another go to is the original NES Ninja Turtles game. Yeah, which has a very poor reputation. For I, I feel like I played that game. Yeah, there's one of the um, classic angry video game nerd episodes is him just ranting about that game oh. <laughs> because there's a lot about it that's like oh, this was sloppily made or this was mm -hmm. not explained or this doesn't make sense and. 
I played and didn't didn't love it growing. I mean, I played it because it was Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Um, but now that it's a bit more playable with the Cowabunga collection, and like you can just easily make a save state and go back if you mess up. Right. Um, I, I, I wonder Maybe it's more forgiving now. if I can go back through it. I did. Yeah. I did boot it up, and within five seconds, my character got run over on the kind of overworld, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh yeah, I remember this." This kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just down a turtle like five seconds into the oh, game. Oh, no. Um, but it's got really good music. And again, it's a very unconventional take on Ninja Turtles. Right. But it's got something, if you can get past the warts, which I'm wondering if this version can get me past Because that. you have all those easy things that you can do to... Right, to just make it a little less frustrating or, or weird. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to maybe give that another go. Yeah. I like how all of these different Ninja Turtle games through, throughout the ages, like, they were able to do something that was true to the original source material, but also, like, be kind of inventive with yeah, it as well. Yeah. Like, you don't see that very often anymore. Like, nowadays, it's like if you're basing something off of an existing, like, IP or whatever, it's like you have very strict limitations of what you can and can't do. Yeah, I felt like it yeah. was very loose back then. And right. so you saw you saw those turtles in, like, so many different, like, permutations. Right. Which made it kind of interesting. Yeah. Like, we don't see that anymore. Something else that's really great is for every game, they have a unique, they call them a strategy guide. And it, yeah. it looks like it's out of, like, Nintendo Power. Yeah, Of, yeah. of that era. And it's kind of like it's cool. walking you through some of the basics or some of the trickier things about those games. Um, I I found a lot of the tips to be pretty common sense, but I just enjoyed looking, looking through it, yeah. at it and how it was done because right. it was really neat. And all those games from that from that developer, always they have so much archival material. I know it's really neat to go through. Um, they've set a new bar this time. They have an old press release. I saw that. It's <laughs> like wow, this is something. That's so cool, though. Are you going to show up in some old, like you know, Mario compilation thirty years from now in a press release with, in, with your old press release? Maybe. <laughs> I have some press releases. You've got a lot of press. I got releases. a lot of press releases. I know, uh, but they've got you know all the manuals, all the old boxes, but they also have it for like different regions. So if you yeah. want to see, like, oh well, this is the you know Japanese. That version. is a smart way to like archive a piece of history. Yeah, it makes it accessible to other right. people. So right. you don't have to like travel to a museum to go see it or whatever. Yeah. You can just put it right in this experience. And they go so really cool. deep on this stuff. They also have like, oh, well, here's all <clears throat> these covers for the Ninja Turtles comic books. I was like, they didn't need to put this in here, but it's cool that they did. Yeah, exactly. So again, if you have any sort of like interest or memories of these games, like you should definitely this get is this. highly recommended. Get it for the for the vi- the nostalgia vibes. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and and a lot of those games are still really fun to play too. Really fun to play. Yeah. Like seriously, really just feels like something you would be able to right, play. Right, right. That would come out today. You can play. All right, Xenoblade Chronicles Three. This is going to be mostly. This is going to be mostly oh you because God, I've, I've been so playing. Tired. I've been playing Turtles and doing rap videos and in the and, evening, and late into the a, night, making a test, doing a Splatoon test fire. Yes. yes so please yeah. tell us what's been happening in Xenoblade oh Chronicles Three. Oh my gosh, 3. I thought I was going to beat it last night. You, this always do. This always happens to you. This last chapter is. I'm gonna say that it's kind of dragging on. Oh a little no! Bit. Yeah, it's kind of like your live alive experience. Oh. I watched House of Dragons last night, so I was like getting a later start. Yeah. But I was like, "There's no way I can't beat it tonight." I, this is like, I'm with you know these, this final set of characters. We're like in the spot that we need to be yeah. to like do the thing that we need to do. Spoiler free, by well, you know that when you finally do beat it, you're not getting out without at least like an hour of cutscenes. There's going to be a, a I just, lot of. I just want to know what's going on okay. with the story because I'm like I'm ready to like yeah. wrap it up, guys. As much as I love this game, like this part is is definitely dragging. So I I'm I feel like I'm at like the close end of chapter seven, which is the last chapter. Yeah. There was a moment when one of the characters said, "This is going to be our final fight." Oh no! And, and I was wasn't? like, "Excellent." And then it wasn't. Oh, you can't do that. And I, I, I don't think I'm there yet because I'm fighting this one other thing right now. Yeah. I actually died. It was a really long oh. battle. And I had already been playing that battle for like at least 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. And then I, my, my party died in the middle of it. So I'm going to start that whole battle over uh, again. There's no checkpoint? Well, you have to fight the boss from the beginning. So. No, yeah. no mid-boss checkpoint. Though. Nope. Uh, sure that's isn't. too bad. Yeah. So I'm back to to fighting that boss, and I got really tired. It was really late, so I, I was starting to fall asleep. So I well, that's a good thing you to... weren't locked into an hour-long cutscene then. 
Well, you could. That was a blessing the, in disguise. You can turn the switch off and you'll pause the. Cutscene. In the middle of the ending, you wouldn't do that. That's true. You would stay up and watch. I was so tired. And then you'd be really grumpy today. So look at look at how well this worked out for all of I us. I guess. Yeah. But um. You know, you're sort of like, you do kind of get the sense now that, like, they're going to tie up these loose ends. You uh-huh. know, the, 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 your mission is clear. Yeah. Um, the characters that you're, again, that you're with, you're starting to, like, just understand what's happened to them. Uh, so that's good. I'm glad that there's, there sounds like there is going to be a very clear ending to the story. Yeah. And that there's going to be, like, a very solid conclusion to some of the questions that we might have had going yeah, through it. Yeah. Um, Cuz it is a it's a bit of a convoluted story for sure. Now some of our we two of our superstars were talking about how they finished the game. One of them said he was reduced to tears. That's true. The other one said he had a giant smile on his face. So we were so a little I was confused. Like, I don't know what to take away from that. That's right. Are you crying out of happiness? Tears of joy? Tears of joy and laughters of despair or what? What's going on? Um yeah, well, I'll, I'll see. I definitely already cried one time, so we'll yeah. see if it reduces me yeah. to laughter or tears. Um, so I'm, I'm going to tell people what I'm going to do with this game. And this this may Controversial. get me some hate, which is fine. You're going to watch YouTube, aren't you? Um, well, again, Splatoon 3 comes out on September 9th. Yeah, that's Once we get soon. to that point, I'm moving on from whatever I'm playing. I'm currently in Chapter 4. Oh, you're never gonna I don't play. think I'm going to be able to finish this game by then. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to play as much as I can yeah. until that point, right. and I'll finish the rest on YouTube. I think that you can get to Chapter 6 before then. Okay. That will get you through that really pivotal moment in yeah. Chapter 5 that sort of sets up the ending. So okay. I think once you do that, and I'm telling you, Chapter 7 is kind of not great right yeah. now, so you might be all right. Because honestly, you know, I, I, I enjoy the combat, but I'm really hooked for the story. Right. So I don't feel like I'm going to be missing that much. The combat that is, much. feels very repetitive towards the end. Right. Especially because of this area that you're sort of in. And I'm, I'm with you. I'm like, no one, I don't want to aggro anybody. I'm just going to run away from these battles because I just want to get to the end yeah. of this game. I don't fight these final bosses and I want to hear the end of the story. Right. So I'm, I'm just right. like spending most of my time just like zipping through this, this last area right. as fast right. as possible. So I'm sure it's offensive to some people, but look, there's only so many hours in a day. <laughs> Too bad. And uh, yeah. I got to gotta prioritize what I'm going to have the most fun with. So yeah. I think that's how I'm going to do it. I think that's fine. Yeah. I think that makes sense. Um, I, I definitely think you, it would be nice for you to get through that chapter five sequence because that, that that's like sort of like the best part of the game sounds like it yeah right for me I, I haven't finished it but it was the best part of the game and it sort of like changed my opinion of xenoblade games oh. and just made me realize like oh this game they really did um spend a lot of time on this narrative and made it feel like very just this like totally different kind of thing than past xenoblade games so yeah i hope that you can get there at least yeah yeah Yes. It's it for games. I'm gonna finish this game today. I'm gonna call. Just you don't. Just don't announce that. I will tweet it if I finish. Okay. The game today. Not a spoiler though. I will tweet a Never spoiler. Never a spoiler. Just don't do that. I'm not gonna do that. That's horrible. Why would I do that? Uh, on to the news though. The newsy news. We got kind of a lot of news because uh, Gamescom happened. And yeah. There's there a, lot a lot of stuff going, going on. on. Okay, so, let's get into so it. So, I, I cherry picked two Sony stories out of Gamescom. Right. Because honestly, I mean, there were there was some stuff, but um, Gamescom is never the a biggest big announcement yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, there, a couple there were a lot of great um, games shown. Um, we actually have a, a Patreon subscriber who is a producer who had a game that won some Gamescom. His awards. game looks so good. Right. Yeah. Paper Trail. Paper Trail. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to play that game. And he won an, uh, some indie awards. Yeah. So congratulations yeah, to so him. I know he worked really, really hard this yeah. week. So. We're so proud. But um, this was some interesting news. Yeah. PS5 price hike. What? Oof. What? Are you joking? Is this the Ken Kutaragi era again? <laughs> Do I need to get my third job going so I can afford a PS5? Guess this what? This is crazy. I've already got one. I can't believe this is happening so, in 2022. So, so it's crazy, but there's also some details about it that I I don't know. I, I feel like I need to learn more about her. I wish I had the full story on. Right. I definitely listened to the uh, Jeff Grubb podcast. Uh, again, I recommend Jeff Grubb for yeah, anything like this because yeah. he knows he what's going on. He has a lot of background information. So, so here's a detail. Um, this isn't happening everywhere. This is. It's in a, a few select right. markets. So Europe, Japan, China, Australia, Mexico, Canada. But the U.S. Not, is not affected. Not the U.S. 
getting a jump, at, they, they say it's basically 50 euros. It sounds like it's about 10% more, you know, based on whatever the, the yeah. starting price was there. And Sony says it is due to high inflation and adverse currency trends. I have seen that, though. The, the you know, the conversion rate or whatever the, right. um, in those countries are dropping pretty significantly. Yeah. So, so what? But so what? It's not their fault. Exactly. Wow. So I didn't what? realize you would come to the defense of the billionaire I'm not defending companies. Them. I'm not defending them. I'm okay. just saying that I have seen these currency things sure. happening. Yeah, it is yeah. true. Um, my my issue with this is like, yes, there's something, again, I'm not an uh, economist, but there's something happening with the economy right now. But like, is this like, this is not the forever state of things. It's never yeah, so it seems state of things. So it seems like a rough patch that Sony should just write out yeah. and suck it up. This is, this is not like the price of gas where every time you go into a store, the price of a PS5 is different, you know? Right. It has a stable price right. that shouldn't fluctuate like this. If anything, you need to reduce it when the time is right. Yeah, I think it's so weird to, like to have it jump like this in this time of the life cycle too, and in a, in a time when people still have a hard people time getting it. People still can't get it. I mean, this is the weirdest console launch. Ever. Now that now that this yeah. has happened for the PS Five, this is the weirdest console. They're launch never going to be able to get it ever again. Like these people, the, these poor people. I mean, it's still selling great, but they're still very constrained. So they're not, you know, completely yeah. maximizing the opportunity. Um, I I doubt this will you know, dull any of the demand. People are still going to want to get it. Yeah. But it just seems like a slimy thing for them to do. And so the detail of it not happening in the U.S. is where I get hung up, which is like, why did they not do this? Yeah. You, are, like, you are an economist. I'm not an so economist. So what is, please explain this to us. What? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. I think it's really strange. Like, why is it in these other countries but not the U.S.? I've is seen it, a lot is of... Is the inflation thing different here? Well, I've seen a lot of theories. Okay. But not... A definitive answer. Like, I would love to have Sony say, but I'm sure they can't say it because the reason is kind of like... I bet the reason is shaky. Iffy, right. Yeah, what's the theory? It's either like, oh, well, they know they can take advantage of these other countries or, like, the competition is more fierce in the U.S., so we can't, you know, mess around with that. I mean, you do always hear about, like, you know, Europe is is very entrenched Mm -hmm. as a Sony market. That is something we heard about a lot. That's true. Um, So maybe they think, like, yeah... PlayStation is, you know, we can do whatever we want there. They'll no, just buy it anyway. Yeah, no one's going to say anything. Yeah, whereas like, oh, people could really jump to Xbox if we did this in the U.S. And we should say, Microsoft and Nintendo have come out and said, we're not, we're not we're raising not any. Gonna raise we're not going to raise any prices. Anything. Yeah. Which is, I think, the right. That's smart. Um, yeah, it just feels like a slimy thing. It's like, yeah, we're doing it because we can and we want to make more money off of you, so deal with it. Yet again. Mm, they need Sony, money. They need Sony the wham. Trying to find ways to just squeeze money out of people. They need the walking don't, around money. Don't cry poor. They're doing just fine. What? But are they? <laughs> yes. They're doing great. And specifically like the Sony I'm the totally Sony kidding. end of things doing great. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's very strange. Yeah. Um, the other news Another they had Sony story. they announced a new version of the controller, the PS5 yeah. DualSense Edge. Did you see this? What do you I, think? I did see this. This is kind of... You know of, what? The DualSense controller is my, one of my favorite controllers. It's a nice controller. Did they fix the battery life? Did they say that here? I don't think they do. <laughs> so this is basically like their version of the Xbox Elite controller. Yeah, which I don't have. Where I don't either. This is... I, I actually, Very expensive. I actually wouldn't want this because this, this has so many options that I feel like I would just end up endlessly tinkering with it yeah and being like is this is this the right setting is that the right setting yeah, i don't like, know it's like the it's like too many options yeah. from like it's like causes like paralysis like right. analysis paralysis exactly yeah so it has remappable buttons adjustable stick you can sensitivity do those profiles. profiles you can mm-hmm. kind of like put on new caps stick and caps and it's got back buttons and stuff so it's i mean it's got a lot that you can mm-hmm. do um they have not announced a price. It's going to be expensive. I'm sure it's going to be pricey. Um, it's be really pricey. So, yeah, cool it exists. Not for me. It's like the people, I think people that love this kind of thing, it's like the same people that love the um, to like customize their own keyboards. Oh, yeah. It's like that that type of person. Yeah, you just yeah. want a very specific and you want you like like to do the research right. as to like how to adjust it. Mhm. That's really not who I am, so yeah. it might not be for me. But um, yeah, I'm glad just having can, one. 
one yeah. setting that just I just let me play the yeah. game. Yeah, I, but I feel like that would be the the kind of person that would buy this. Yeah, and, and good, you know, that would be like a good for them kind of thing. Right, right. So. Uh, there was a Splatoon 3 Treehouse Live. Yes. Did you watch it? I did. Okay. I did watch it. I watched it mostly for the single player stuff. They yeah, were they did show some single player stuff. Um, yeah, some of those levels look interesting. Like it was more, almost more like puzzle based yeah. than I than I had previously yeah. thought. I, I I'm trying to remember back to the last single player mode. The, did, the, it, the Octo expansion or, Octo of, expansion or of Splatoon 2? Splatoon 2. Which one? Splatoon 2. Not the Octo expansion. Not the Octo expansion. Okay. <laughs> yes and also yes. Hello? <laughs> you said yes twice. I said Splatoon 2. You said, I said Octo and you nodded. I said Splatoon 2. This is being recorded. We're going to find out. Keep, keep going, though. <laughs> like, I'm trying to remember if that had those puzzle elements. I think it kind of did, right? It did have yeah, a, a yeah. bit of that. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely had some cues from, like, it seemed to be picking up where the Octo expansion left off. Right. Right. Um, which is great. I, I really enjoyed that. I like that, too. Um, it's always hard to know, like, when to play the Splatoon single player. Because when, when you get a new Splatoon game, it's like, well, I got to well, play gotta some. Well, I got to play some. Everybody's some playing multiplayer, yeah. so I feel like I'm missing out. If right. I don't play I don't that play. first, yeah. then it's like, oh, I also want to play the single player, but I got to, yeah. how am I going to squeeze it in? Yeah, but I do want to play the single player. I like, really do, it's, yeah. It's always, like, really fun, you know? Yeah, it's always, it's always well done. What else is there yeah. with it, you yeah. know? Yeah. And it's, it's always, like, I think I always found, like, time when I wasn't able to get an internet connection. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to play the single player. Like, Do you need the pillow set up for that, for single player? Not as much. Okay. Not as much. Okay. How do I do this on the plane when I need to play Splatoon? Uh, they have, have on, pillows on planes. They have pillows and yeah. the, the, the tray table. They have all this good. stuff. Yeah. yeah. I can do that. They've got it all. I can do that. You can take a video <laughs> of me. Uh, there was also Harvestella in the Treehouse Live. Did you watch that? I did not watch I didn't Harvestella. Either. No. That game looks cute, but... I just yeah. I can't I need to back burner some of these longer like yeah. sim type games. Right. Just don't, don't have time to play. You've it. promised your heart to Rune Factory. You can't just be jumping off the hardest stuff. I can't be. Stella. Yeah, I need to play Rune Factory yeah. or anything before. Yeah. Rune Factory is going to get upset. That's right. Yeah. yeah, but no, it was it's always they never do enough Treehouse Lives. They they always kind of they're it's always, always like once a year. They're always like far and in between, yeah. you know? So yeah. it's always good to see those like that kind of gameplay. Right. Like, you know, it, it's nice you don't get a glimpse of that very yes. often anymore. So I right. was nice Please to Please do it. more of those. Yeah, yeah, it's a deal. All right, these next two, let's really sink our teeth into these. Yes. And these happen kind of around the same time. It's kind of cool, actually. Um, so. I like this. Masahiro Sakurai, your good friend, has started yeah, a YouTube channel. Wow. Smash that like button. He didn't, he didn't say, say that. it. <laughs> that was my point. It's like if anyone oh, has gosh. the right to TM that, it is... Sakurai. He did sink sink into the filthy YouTuber script, but then he felt dirty about it. He did feel dirty. Asking you He's to like, subscribe. I'm never going to ask you yeah. to do this again. All right. I mean, you can. Um, so the goal of his channel is quote to try and help make games around the world a little more fun. I love that. So, so it cute. really is about like breaking down game design right. decisions and explaining that to people in a way that is pretty non-technical. It's yeah. It, you, like a layperson, like you and I can yeah. watch it and and they're very like. Mini. Like yeah, they're, they're not super they're long. Very short. Yeah. Um, and he's been posting a lot. Like he's been posting like almost daily. It's he like, must have have like some like. He's live, got a lot of them banked. He's got like, banked them. Yeah. yeah. I'm so curious of like who is helping him with these. I know. Doesn't he look like the same production team that did his Sakurai? Um, it does. Yeah. What was it called? Uh, Sakurai, right. Sakurai presents. Well, that was that was a Nintendo team, I'm sure. I know. But so. Well, was it though, or was it like a, <laughs> his own? He's his got own, somebody. His I mean, own if he's, team that he was just ooh. like out. Working with, and he just like shipped the videos to Maybe. Nintendo. Yeah. I can see him do or that because he, yeah. he likes to do things his own way. Like, sure. Clearly, sure. like he has a very specific standard that he needs to meet. Right. Like when we were doing Sakura Pre Presents with him, um, his team. I thought it was so fun because the way that he worked with his production team was kind of the way that we worked with our production team at Nintendo, where like they were almost like part of it. He would like. Have them. They, they, you, they were like mic'd sometimes. They would like tell a joke to they them. Tell a joke and they would laugh. You'd hear them laugh. Exactly. They were like. Stop kind of, biting our style, Sakurai. Yeah. Again, I must have been your inspiration. <laughs> it's okay. I'll let you have it. Um, <laughs> but like, that's like so not 
Nintendo, right. which is what makes right. me think that he had his own team mm. that he's been okay. using and like shipping the videos off. Well, what I'm trying to say is like they're really well done. And Super well done. They seem to know him really yeah. well. He's great at it. I mean, it's, he's clearly got kind of a script going for him, but it's delivered in a very like he's got stuff to say. Way. Like right. he's 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 like I feel like he's bursting with yeah. things to share. Right. Um, which I totally relate to. It's like I want to tell you guys this stuff. Like yeah. it's what he. I get the sense from him. Right. And uh, you were saying, I think you tweeted this, um, but it's like, it's so rare now to get this glimpse into the, the mind of like an amazing like developer like Sakurai. Yeah. Um, we never see it really from Nintendo anymore. Right. So just to get that like, not unscripted, but like this more authentic glimpse um, is really special, you know? And like, I'm, I'm super excited that he's doing this and I hope that it encourages more people yeah. to do more stuff. Well that that was one of the most interesting bits in there was, you know, he's getting a lot of materials from Nintendo and getting approval from Nintendo to show the oh stuff my off. Goodness. Which we could we only had I to can, imagine I can imagine the hot emails yeah. on, the, on this. Let me tell you people. <laughs> the tooth gnashing. Oh my gosh. They are through gritted it's like, teeth. I desperately want to tell this guy no, but I cannot. I cannot. Yeah. I, that's the thing too. He, he, I think he know, like he he's done this before, not in the same way, but he has. There, there's been specific moments that I remember where he's sort of like pushed away, like their, you know, sort of Nintendo of Japan's like um, request right. or whatever. Like he he is very like I admire this greatly about, about him. He's very much like I want things done the certain way. Right. Um, I am in control of this. It's like two people like kind of like butting heads a little bit on the control. Yeah. They're two equally like, I need to control these things very tightly. Um, but he's always been very good about just like setting those boundaries for himself. And I can Im I imagine this conversation going, yeah. him doing that in his way and them, you know, Japan, yeah. uh, you know, Nintendo. Nobody Japan will say no to him. We'll, we'll have yeah. to relent. Right, and right. Give up this yeah. stuff, which yeah. makes me like, oh my, it's like giddy. It's yeah, so funny. But, I love it. But I that, love it. But that's really the hope. Is it's true? You know, for the past couple of years, Nintendo has kind of shut down any sort of developer interaction at all activity of them yeah. being out there or talking about their games. Really yes, yeah, yes, they do. Ask the developer. That still feels like it is kind of a half baked idea that needs to get the kinks worked out. Yeah. Um, so my hope is that you know they will see the reaction to this. And the positivity and, and, and genuine excitement that yeah, this creates in people. Yeah, and curiosity that people have. And maybe just ease up on that a little bit. I know. You would you would hope so. I, I mean, I doubt that that's what will happen. They'll yeah. just be like, hey, that guy's crazy for doing this. And oh, they're really, just be like, that's just sacrifice. He's really twisting his arm, and we don't thing. like it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But... Um, I mean, yeah, some people may not know. Sakurai is not a Nintendo employee. That, that's how he can get away he with it. He is kind of his, his own, own Sora his own thing. Is his Sora is his own company. Right. He has the he has really worked himself at a sweet little deal because he can basically again I really admire the man for doing this. He can basically like do what he wants under his own company, right. and he he did this very strategically. I think he like kind of broke off, started his own like independent thing, so he can maintain control yeah. in the way that he needs to and wants to. And I I think that's great. You mm -hmm. know, like he definitely knew what he wanted and he went for it. And um, he's put himself in a position where it's very difficult, if not impossible, for Nintendo to really say no to him or like, like try to stop him from doing what he wants to do. So good for him. I love it. Do you think this is him kind of taking a breather or is this like something he's doing on the side while he's making a new game? I, I hope that he's taking a break, honestly. Like, I think he deserves a break. I think he deserves to, like, pull himself out of, like, the, just that, like, vortex of Smash. Especially, like, this last game, Ultimate, was just, like, such a huge thing. It's just, I can't imagine, like, how much energy he has really given of himself into this thing. So, whether this is, like, a breather for those reasons or, you know, some, something he's doing in, a, in the interim. Like, it just feels different enough for him to, like, refresh his mind a little bit. Everyone needs that, you know? Yeah. I feel like when you 
have just been thinking about the same thing probably for like five, six, seven, eight years or whatever it is, like you need to you need to think about something else for a little while. So I hope that this is part of that. Yeah, he's been, on, he's been on a pretty hardcore grind for the last, like, I don't know, 10 years or something. Exactly. Or like, so I do hope that, I mean, and maybe he's, you know, thinking through an idea in the background or yeah. like, you know, putting pen to paper and, and, I hope it's not and getting, getting something designed out. Um, but this does feel like something he can really devote a good a chunk of time to. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious how long he'll do it at this pace. Right. Um, but it's great, and it and it really is kind of like your own little mini GDC in ways that are accessible to us. Exactly. Yeah, I've, I've definitely watched um, a fair amount of the videos, and I found them to be, like, all really interesting. And, um, it, it, again, I just get the sense that he really wants to tell us about this. Yeah. And that's, like, the most, I think, special part is, like, it, felt, it feels like something that he really wants to do. Yeah. You know, yeah. not, like... Oh, I have to make another game for whatever reason, for some contract or whatever, or I need to, I have these obligations, you know, like I hate it when I see things like that, but this is like, this is truly feels like something like, I want to do this, I'm going to do it. And I think that's really awesome for him. One weird thing I have been seeing is like Sakurai subscriber watch where it's like, oh my gosh. Sakurai surpassed 100,000 subscribers. Or or in 48 hours, Sakurai surpassed 200,000. It's like... Well, duh! Yeah, this is going to be popular. We don't need to, like... Why do we need to Act so surprised when he gets a lot of subscribers. I don't don't see that for a lot of other people. I don't know why we're doing it for him. Yeah, he's, like, literally one of the most famous game developers of all time. Right. I don't understand. I don't understand this. I don't know. (laughs) Uh, So kind of in the same ilk... Um, this is cool too. Hideo Kojima is doing a podcast. Yeah. So it yeah. sounds like this is kind of exclusive to Spotify. Yeah. You can get our podcast on Spotify too. You Not can. exclusively. Not exclusive. You can get all sorts of places, but you can get it there. Um, the thing that I thought was interesting is he's going to be doing it in both English and Japanese. Right, right. And when we worked on Nintendo Power Podcast, we did some segments with people in Japanese. That is not easy to do. It's very challenging. That is a difficult production to kind of lay the translated voice over the original voice mm-hmm. that you can still hear enough yeah. and have it all match up. Yep. Very challenging. Very, and then the other thing that's challenging to do is anytime you have any sort of translation with an English speaker and a non-English speaker, it does sort of take away this this very natural flow of conversation right. that happens, that is very important with a podcast. And so... We had a lot of challenges, I think, with that, with the Nintendo Power podcast with developers, because you would just have to, like, have all these sort of breaks in your thought process and their thought process. So, yeah, I'm curious to see how this is going to go. And you know it's not just going to be him, you know, Japanese to Japanese. I'm sure there'll be a lot of conversations that will be, you know, Japanese to English and and back and forth. I'm I'm sure, I mean, he's he's got no shortage of resources, so I'm sure he'll be just fine. Be just fine. But um, that was something that we had to deal with. Right. Looks like he's, it sounds like he's going to have a lot of guests. Yeah. Um, that might be one of his main focuses for the podcast as well. Right, so, right. Yeah. Just so interesting, though, that these two big developers kind of like almost at the same time announced these big, you know, Independent media. Or content. Content type. ventures. Yeah. Right. I'm excited for both of them. I feel like they're such like industry staples and they, they right. they're, it's so true. Like they, there's a very small number of people that have this sort of wealth of knowledge that is from this kind of deep immersion right. in the gaming <clears throat> industry. And you don't see these perspectives yeah. very often. So so here's my question for you. Mm. If you are IGN or GameSpot, are you, nervous? Are you a little freaked out that this is nervous? happening? Yeah. It, it does feel like another like sort of shift in how people are getting information uh, and, and, and how people want to consume like information is it still those now our traditional ways of consuming information is on you know ga- gaming information is on on uh, gaming news media right on on those more traditional sites but if you're getting it from the horse's mouth you know is that more appealing i would say for me yeah. that would be more appealing yeah i think you know there's some things that that those sites will always do that you know hideo kojima is not going to do out, reviews, he's not going to put out a guide to the new pokemon walk through, game he's going to walk through and he's the, not going to review games so there's yeah. some things that the media will always have in their corner that are very labor intensive right that other people will not want to mm, do but that's true. but as far as like telling the story 
of the industry, they just can't do it in the same way because right. they're kind of one step removed. removed. Right. So right. They're, they're really looking at it from the sidelines. Right. And the players are in, you know, are right. actually in, in, in the middle right. here. So th this is a trend that has happened. You know, I, I've seen it happen in sports where there's this, this influx of like ex-players right. or even current players that who are, who are start starting, their own thing. Yeah. starting podcasts so or are appearing on like the halftime shows. So I wonder, like, is this going to become a big trend in games now where yeah. more, you know, people who are active developers or active in the industry are going to start up these big content ventures? I mean, we certainly count ourselves among these people. Right, right. I think so, because you, you and I have a very unique perspective on the gaming industry that a person in the media would not have. Right. Because they didn't work at Nintendo for 14 years, you right. know? So... Yeah, so I do wonder. I, I, there, I think there is a there is a world where all of this can work together in a beautiful so in a beautiful symphony, right? Where we could just like all of these different awesome creatives, um, members of the media, whatever can can come together and really just showcase the gaming industry in like this cool new way where you get somebody on the outside, someone who's a fan or who's passionate about the industry, can really get these really cool perspectives about what it's really like, whether it's from us who've worked in the games industry for, for you know, over a decade or from a developer who's talking about how, what it takes to make a game to a person, you know, that's a media person sharing about, you know, a game review or something like that. I think there's a way for all to, like, work in concert, but it might have some growing pains. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the one thing that was like, well... Whenever Kojima has his next big announcement, like is he going to have so many of his own content channels? He's going to announce he's, it there. He's not going to need. I mean, you know, he will always work with Jeff Keighley. That's right. We know that. We know that. Yeah. <laughs> but now he can really like go in depth yeah. on you know what his vision is right. on this podcast, and who knows what else he's going to develop out as time goes on. I think exactly. it's, I think that's really smart. That's what we were trying to do at Nintendo. Right. We were part of the original content division. Right. We were extremely hamstrung yeah, in a lot of that. It was of that. nearly impossible. But it was impossible. <laughs> you would think for most people that vision would be very clear of yeah. you can a brand as big as Nintendo can you have You can control all of right. these moments. You can be the orchestrator right. of this of all of the conversation and and whatever else the trending stuff that's going to happen right. around your big announcements. Right. And you can, there's a, a cynical take on that is like, well, that's propaganda. That's just you putting it out the way that you want. But I think our view on it was like, no, it's actually extremely authentic because the people who are involved are telling you why they're passionate about it. Yeah. And why you should care. Right. 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 Exactly. So I, um, I'm interested to see, but I, again, I think all of this can work together. Like he, he can still do cool things with, you know, Kojima, yeah, he's, he's not giving up making games. Yeah. Kojima can still make really great games. He can still do stuff with Jeff Keighley at the game awards, which I'm sure it's going to happen. He can still have an amazing podcast where he goes in depth about whatever he wants to talk about. That's going to be fun and interesting. Yeah. Like I think all these pieces can, can live cohesively, you yeah. know, but yeah. yeah. But it's, it is really interesting, and it, it does kind of give me that, like, that little sense that, like, oh, this is kind of the shifting. Yeah. Parts of it is shifting again. The shifting media landscape. Oh, the landscape. As, as we would often uh, be, be told about. I love it. By very scared communications professionals. Yes. How do we, how do we keep what up we do? with the shifting media <laughs> landscape? Hot emails. Oh, no. Um, yeah, it's very scary. It's not. It's actually really fun. Yeah. Um, that's the way it should be. We shouldn't be stagnant. Yes. Know? So. So that's the news. Awesome. That is the news. Exciting wow. Stuff. Wow. 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 Uh, okay. On to questions from our lovely Patreon community. Yeah. First is from Courtney. Hi guys. I have two questions related to gaming trilogies. Mm. Sorry if either of these have previously been asked. I don't think they have. I don't think they have. But yeah. We should say. Please be glad to ask questions that we have already answered. Yes, um, new people we, are always joining. We do not expect everybody to listen to every single episode or every single Q and A. Yeah. So some stuff is just and it's just good to get out there again and again. We might change your mind on something. Might have something new to say. So you want to ask us? You're a noted flip flopper. I am. I, yeah. I change my mind a lot. I'm a very. <laughs> I have very commitment averse. Yes. So I will definitely change my mind. Uh, first question: What are some of your favorite gaming trilogies? In a sense that cohesively you feel the plot is woven together well, and all three games really contribute to a well-rounded overall body of mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. Second, mm -hmm. what is a video game trilogy where you feel one game really brings down the overall quality of the trilogy and keeps it from being a good trilogy in your eyes? 
Is this one game comparatively bad enough compared to the other two that you would consider skipping it just to enjoy the others? Oh. So a two-parter. Okay. Good and bad. Um, my favorite game trilogy is the Ezio trilogy ah. from Assassin's Creed. So that is uh, Assassin's Creed 2, two. Uh, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, Brotherhood and, and, and the other one. What is the other one? So I think I think I think your answer is actually the answer to the second question. It was uh, Assassin's Creed Revelations, where he's in Turkey. Is that the one? Is it? Because I found that one to not be super great. Is that the order they're in? If you don't even know the order, this can't be your I answer. I feel like they were they were all three really good. Well, then what's the third one? Is it Revelations? What's the third one? I don't remember. But so that's my right answer. There. Okay. I mean, the first two were. Very certified good. bangers. I think Brotherhood is my favorite yeah, Assassin's that's a, Creed game of all time. The one in Rome. That's right. Super duper ooper good. Yes. Ooper. Yes. Ooper good. Um, my answer to both of these actually has nothing to do with trilogies. They're just kind of like in a series of games where what really stands out. Mm -hmm. This might be surprising. SteamWorld Dig, SteamWorld Heist, SteamWorld Dig 2. Oh yeah, those are great. Like the quality and progression of those three games is really hard to beat. It is hard to beat. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Like I think that really those games. And they're, they're, each game is different enough. Yes. For you to feel like, oh, this is a new game, but then not so different that you are out of the universe. Right. And going Splatoon should learn from oh, Steam World. Going from Steam World Dig to Steam World Heist was such a like, oh, you're just completely changing genres. Yeah. But it, that it game worked. That was amazing. It really did. And then did Steam work. World Two was like such a big step from the original Steam World, which I also yeah, I love from I the beginning. It. Yeah. But they took it to a whole nother level. Right. Uh, it's been a while since we had a new Steam World game. I think we're such I think we're a due. Game. Make one. We need to go back to Sweden. Oh, Sweden. Um. The other one, do you have a... Uh, a negative one? Again, my answer is not from a trilogy. Okay. But it's from a Just long... Just three games? It's from a long-running series where pretty much every other game is really good. Uh-huh. Mario Kart. Oh, I was going to say Mario Kart. The poor Mario Kart is... Mario Kart 64 is the one that I That was not the one I was going to say, but that can be your choice. Yeah. The one I don't like is Mario Kart Super Circuit on the Game Boy Advance. Oh, I didn't even play that game. Uh, just doesn't doesn't control right to me. Mario Kart 64 doesn't control right to me. Oh, you should have been there. You had to be there. That's, <laughs> That's right. You think so? I don't know. I love that game. I don't think it's yeah. very good. It does. It does feel. It has some problems. It does stand out in a number of ways from other Mario Kart yeah. games, but in ways that I actually like. I know. I know a lot of people don't. Like I don't that like game. it. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, Super Circuit though. It's like they kind of tried to push the Game Boy Advance technology a little too far. It didn't work. And it just feels super like squishy and the whole thing's like rot it like makes you dizzy, like how it's oh, rotating all dizzy. around. Like, yeah, oh. I, I didn't play that game too. So well. I guess we kind of non answered Courtney's question. But. Double Dash is really good though. Oh yeah. That was the one after that was like, oh I like I yeah, like, yeah, I like this again. That's great. Every, like every other again. every other Mario Kart game I like. Yeah, yeah. Frulio, what were some other some underappreciated aspects of your jobs at Nintendo that deserve more praise and recognition. Underappreciated? Positivity corner right now. Positivity corner, okay. Um, what you got? Well, <laughs> as you are clearly <laughs> struggling to do this, um, uh, you know, sometimes the travel did get to be quite a grind, but that was a nice aspect of the job. Oh, yeah, of, of being able to go all these different places, and you know, we went to Japan multiple times. Mm -hmm. I went to Europe. Um, we, you know, we, we saw a lot of the world and you know did some cool things through yes. through the travel that we had to do for our jobs. That's true. Lots of good travel. I would say um, the other part of that is uh, a lot of people that we worked with and traveled with really liked food. Oh. So we would always have very good. Yes. Food was never. Like an afterthought, right? With the the Nintendo group that we had, yeah. we always had really wonderful meals together. There was like a lot of passion for finding, you know, finding good food in places. Yeah, I think one of the things, you know, the flip side of it being such a challenging job, like you really did have to push yourself and improve. Yeah. Like, I feel like you know the the me that 
went into Nintendo is very different than, than the me that came That's true. out. Yeah. And not just from like a you know personality standpoint, but just like professional skills. Like I feel like yeah. I built a lot of skills you did. because yeah. I had to do so much. Yeah, yeah, you were forced to, or else you right. wouldn't be able to it's make it. It's a very sink or swim. It's a very sink or swim. Right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it does, it does, you know, under those pressure cooker circumstances, you do like have very close connections with and relationships with people yeah. like we went to dinner recently with some of our old nintendo friends yeah and like you know you're just like best friends yeah it's just because you went went through this been like through it all harrowing experience together so now mm-hmm. you have this like connection that you'll yeah. have forever you yeah. know uh next question is from gartooth hi kit and krista i need to ask both of you about one of the most hotly debated nintendo <laughs> questions ever I apologize in advance if this question ruins friendships or makes enemies, but the viewers have to know. Oh, wow. What the is question the question? The question is, which Mario Galaxy game do you like better, Galaxy 1 or Galaxy 2? Let's say it at the same time. Ready? One, two, three. Two. Galaxy 2. Oh, oh good. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Woo! Close call. Uh, close call, close call. I, I like Yoshi. Gal- I like Galaxy. I don't like Galaxy as much as most people, I think. I think you don't. I think it's the, the Wii pointer stuff. Was kind of weird. I don't like that, and especially in um, the 3D All Stars collection. Yeah. I re- I really wish they had come up with a way to not have to do that. Right, right. It was we- awkward on right, Switch. Right, right. Yeah. It, it just didn't work as well. So yeah. I feel like that hurts like the like long term playability like, of playability that game. Of it's, that like, game. it's like in the moment, it's like oh yeah, this is what we do with a Wii, and every game had motion back then. But now it's like right. what? What, what, I, what why do I have is to this do? Happening. Yeah. Yeah. You have to like. Press a weird button and then use the touch screen. Yeah, and it was yeah. Strange. I mean that was still in Galaxy Two, but like it, they just really amped up so many of the ideas. I think that's and why Yoshi I like added it. a lot. Yoshi. Um, yeah. That's that's a really top tier Mario game. That one is a really great example of how you can go from one game yeah. to another game and really like stay in that same, you know, that same genre, but yeah. like push it so much further. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, that I love Galaxy Two. Paul Gale Network has our next question. Kit and Krista, what do you think of PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale in general, and how did you react when the game was first revealed in October 2011? Nowadays, there are plenty of Smash Brothers-inspired games out there, but at the time, this one was more rare and surprising. Mm-hmm. I didn't play this game. I didn't play this game either. Yeah, I think I was playing Smash Brothers. There are a lot of kind of Smash, I don't know if you, clones, is that... Is, is that, that overstepping really to call them Smash clone, Clones? It's got the Nickelodeon game, got multiverses. Yeah, multiverses. Now, people seem to be enjoying these games, though. Like, yeah. There's some, I mean, obviously, there's going to be, this genre is very appealing. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, this, this game, I don't remember, I don't remember playing it, but I do remember there was some, there was definitely a lot of like chatter about it and like discussion about what that means for Smash. Did we have a Smash game launch that year? I don't think we did. 2011? 2011. No, I, I think there no. was there was that was a little bit later. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't like during a launch year right, or right. anything like that. So we didn't see that, but there I mean, recognition within Nintendo that yeah. this is very similar to Smash. It feels like with these new games, these companies just have just gotten gotten over like, yeah, some people are going to make fun of us because this is so close to Smash, but it's fine. We're just going to power through. Yeah, and people are just going to play and it anyway. And in the end, people are going to play it. Yeah. It feels like with this game, Sony kind of half weighed. They didn't fully embrace it. Right. And they were almost like a little... Chicken? Embarrassed. I think they were of, a little chicken. Of admitting like, yeah, this is inspired by Smash right. Brothers or this is kind of the same style of game. Whereas now it's kind of become a, it's a genre. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So nobody in Nintendo was worried about this game. It right. was kind of a joke, honestly. There was some chatter, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and again, it didn't seem good enough for, for you or I to really get into it. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe it's time for them to bring it back. There you, you go. Know, now, 10, 11 now years you, later. You have not played some of these newer like multiverses no, or Nickelodeon. I don't really care to. They all, they all seem like relatively popular. People are definitely playing Well, it. what's interesting is you see a lot of these pro Smash players trying to like move over. And, yeah. and I'm, I'm like... I would love to hear more of like the reasoning for that. Is it like do they genuinely you know think this is a, a good game? Is it just their skills transfer over? Do they see like if they're a big melee player, it's like gosh, it seems like the melee community is going to slowly, slowly shrink. shrink out. Yeah. So I need to find my next thing, thing to move over to. I'd love right. to. I'd love to hear more about that yeah. whole phenomenon because yeah. I see it happening. Right. When is this going to be a Nevo game multiverses? Um, is it a Nevo? 
I think it, it is it. I, I didn't follow Evo this year close enough. It may have yeah. been there in some capacity. There, yeah. So okay. yeah. Uh, Ray Del Empire wants to know how many of the Nintendo employees were actual Nintendo fans? For example, I bought every Nintendo console and I mostly play Nintendo games. I think you know what I mean by Nintendo fans. I'm just curious. It would be cool to work in a company where everyone is a gamer, Nintendo specifically, but I imagine some people in the company don't play games. Like, is Doug a gamer? Is Furukawa a gamer? Um, I would say the, ma the vast majority of people that worked at Nintendo definitely played games. Well, it's interesting because early in our Redwood City office, that was the rap that that office had, was nobody there played any games, and nobody That's knew true. anything about yeah. games. So that was like a real stigma we had to get over. But it wasn't true. Initially, it was somewhat true-ish. Over time, it became extremely not true. Okay. Like, our game knowledge and passion overtook, I think, some of the other I, I would say that teams and locations. There was people in the office, in the Redwood City office, early, early days, that played... That were all like, you know, they all played video games, maybe like different genres, like different kinds. They may not be a Nintendo gamer, but there were certainly a lot of people that, that, that grew up playing PC games, that played, you know, other, other types of other consoles and stuff like that. Um, versus it in Redmond where everybody was only playing Nintendo games. Mm. I would say that was... There seemed to be like a sigh of relief when I joined of like, oh, thank goodness we have somebody on the PR team who knows a thing or two about games. That's just unfair because there was I was there before you and so were many people that okay. played games. Okay, I'm just saying. That was the impression that I got. I you seem upset by I disagree this. with that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the answer, though, Doug and Furukawa. Um, Furukawa is a gamer. Yeah? It's really funny because we were, uh, he, he did this like talk at our at the Redwood City office one time, and he said, "I was playing this game, and I beat the. I forget what game it is. What game was it? Do you remember this? Finish your story. I don't know. It was like uh, I, I was playing this game, and I beat the game as Fire Emblem, and mm. I got to the credits, and it's it said my name, <laughs> and then I I thought to myself, better start stop playing games and get back to work, <laughs> and I thought that was literally the cutest thing, <laughs> best thing I've ever heard." And it, it made me like him a lot more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think he's, I mean, I don't think he's, you know, grinding out games on the weekend, but I think he's got, you know, something that he's always playing, and I think yeah. he, he appreciates games. Um, Absolutely. Doug, I think, he is putting in a lot of effort to really get up to speed on Nintendo games. I like, feel the same. There's a lot of Nintendo franchises who's like, yeah, I don't, I didn't play that much growing up. He or, did play COD. He, yes. Uh, Call was of Duty. EA before he said Nintendo. he was more of like like a shooter, like sports game fan. Yeah, yeah. But I give him props for like he's putting in the effort to oh, totally. to catch up. He is, he is. on on all of that stuff. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I mean everybody has if, if, even if they're not a gamer, quote gamer, they had a certain degree of appreciation for Nintendo, and they have some nostalgia for Nintendo, right? Well, or or, yeah. or you know they. They could have just recognized, like, oh, this is the positive impact that Nintendo is having, and I understand why, and I appreciate and respect that. So I never felt there was, like, that much, like, friction. Because it was like, yeah, yeah not, not everybody who works here is going to be a huge gamer. I don't think you need to be, honestly. No. To work yeah. for a gaming company. Like, you need to have a skill set that matches your job description. And sometimes, honestly, it was kind of nice to have... Some non like Nintendo fan mm -hmm. because you have like a different perspective and you can like look at a project from another angle yeah. and really like take your take the the Nintendo fandom out of it because that's the Nintendo fan is is gonna buy the game like you right. don't need to market you don't really need to sell it to them like a lot of the times we were expected to sell to what we they would call like the expanded audience or whatever which is like people that don't play video games mm -hmm. um, so like it's nice to have that person you know other people's perspectives on how to like appeal to those kinds of people so I always appreciate it when we had different um, opinions and um, people that like interacted with games in different ways yeah um, so that was always nice uh, oh our next question is a callback another friendship to, uh, annihilation another friendship annihilation which series has demolished the most relationships Mario Kart Smash Brothers or Mario Party this is from Riven by the from way from Riven yes it's gotta be Mario Party. It's gotta be Mario Party. Right? Mario Party's cheap. Because at the end, it's like, oh, you get these arbitrary points. 
Yeah, you know, you're, you, now you thought you won, but you actually lost. Right. So it's basically like tricolor spot fest. It feels like it doesn't matter. Like exactly. no matter how well like, you what, do, it's like, well, matter? I'm just gonna lose. Yeah. Yeah. That's the obvious. That's answer. that's why you can get you can. Get I don't think so. I don't I don't think Smash Brothers deserves to even be on the list. I don't think so either. That's just skill. Right. It's like you're better than me. Okay. I guess like <laughs> items. But still, you can pick nah, up the item. Even more. even then, the better player yeah. is probably going to win. Yeah. yeah, Mario Kart. I can see that with Mario Kart. Of, there's there's enough oh, enough skill. Rubber banding, but yeah. there's some skill involved too. Yeah, yeah. So. Mario Party though. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Robert's Faison. For both of you, if Kirby were to inhale you, what ability would he get? Sleep. Sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Angst. Teenage angst. Um, you probably sleep or some sort of food. Oh. Well, that's what Kirby's already doing. Oh. He's just going to turn into like a cupcake. We need, somebody needs to do a Kirby with both of our hairstyles. Because that's always the best. Oh, that's good. Yeah, Brothers. I like the Bayonetta Kirby yeah, it's hairstyle. Always like, let's see. Nintendo of Europe would always beat us to the punch with those tweets, and I would be mad. I was like, why is this the first They're thing we're so tweeting? They're so smart. They know. People want to so see clever. this with the new Kirby looks. Yeah. Post this before anything else. <laughs> before the, the big announcement? Yes. Yeah, I think the, the hairstyles are, is, is really yeah. funny. What was the other one that he had? Here? It was a, a, was it a, They're all good. Like the cloud the hair. The cloud hair. Yeah. That was the one They're I was thinking They're all good. Of. Yeah. All right. Tech magic. There's a you didn't answer the question about... Sarcasm. Oh, sorry. Yeah. You said sarcasm. That wasn't okay. for you. That was for me. Oh, that was for me. So you didn't answer the question. You said food. No, I said, I said sleep. But he does that too. Well, he can inhale me and in sleep. I love to see. Huh? Anyway, tech magic. This came to my mind while listening to the podcast. I want to know if you guys were involved in this really special moment getting Mario to appear on the Game Theory live channel and then get them Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Was this a special one-time thing or did other content creators get a special visit? And there is a, a, a clip here Here's of Matt. the old Mario costume character going to MatPat. Yeah. This, we did this fairly often. We did this a lot. Right. Yeah. This was a go-to. Tried go-to, and true. Tried and true. Surprise the creator with some sort of special delivery. Yes. We did it. We 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 put um. We had other ones where we like sent a giant box filled with balloons, and you open the box, and the whole balloons right. fell came out. Yeah, Mario character. The giant sandwich. Giant sandwich. For the uh, uh, um, DSXL. DSL XL. <laughs> DSIXL. Wow, that was hard to say. Um, there was also we would we would drive the um. What was it? We had that like the Mario Airstream. Oh yeah. We would drive that to their houses, and they could like have parties, yeah. and people can come out and play. Right. That was fun. But yeah, we, we definitely did this with other uh, content creators. Um, get a, a fun visit from from Nintendo. Yeah. Get the game. Right. The, the whole point is that we want them to film it, obviously. Right. Share right. It There's probably a lot of other yeah. clips of this you can find uh, yeah. if you want so to look. So fun. We, yeah. There was a weird one where. Um, around the time Animal Crossing came out, it was like, well, we've got these new costume characters. We, oh, we yeah. want to send them to Brie Larson's house because she was she had been do- doing the ad for us. That's right. And it was like, well, we just started this thing called a pandemic. Right. So I don't think she wants random people to show up unannounced to her house. Yeah, in new costumes. We strangely got like a lot of pressure, like, no, we should do this. We need to find a way to we're do like, this. We're like, we're not doing this. Let's just drop this. Yeah, this kind <laughs> of- Can we please not? Very tone deaf yeah. to like a current world situation. <laughs> Like Isabel's in like a mask. I know. Or something. What are we like, doing? What's, what's happening? Stop. You know, bring her like bring Brie Larson like a giant tub of hand sanitizer. Oh my gosh. It's just weird. Uh, the Natrix. It's a fun name. Hiya. Yeah. If you could feature any video game character as a guest on your podcast, who would you choose? Oh wow. What questions would you ask them, and or topics would you like to talk about? Hmm. I'm going with Wario. Kratos. Wario. A Wario. Wario wants to talk some dirt. He's and he's fart. And he's got it. He's um, gonna make that studio stink. I mean, I mean, some podcasts have sound effects, so him, <laughs> he could just do live fart sounds, you know? It's like eating a garlic and yeah. farting. But no, I think I think Wario. You think he's got stuff. dirt? Like what kind oh, of yeah. dirt? You got teeth still? He's got dirt on Mario. It's like, oh, you think Mario's got you know, squeaky clean? Let me tell you a little story. <gasps> yeah. Oh, Mario. I think it's another. I think another one cut out of this cloth is Isabel. She would. Really, she get some of those. You got some a, of those adult mimo- beverages mimo- going. Mimosas going. Let me, going? Tell, let me tell you about Tom Nook. Well, she's got yeah. She's been like working for the man for too long. <laughs> she definitely has some yeah a peephole into his weird habits. Yeah. Kratos, you were saying? Kratos. Okay. I have to know. He's gonna yell. Get, get your levels on your mic right because he's gonna I be know. yelling. But he might have some really good stories. Yeah. 
Yeah. Can okay. we sit down and talk about his very All troubled right. past? Interesting. Be, it'd be very juicy. Yeah. Is this like a old timey true crime? <gasps> oh, we can the do crimes, cute. war crimes. Yeah, we could do some sort of. <laughs> that'd be fun. Okay. I want to know. I want to get all dark. Lucretius. Wow. All right. Uh, no, this person explained how to pronounce the name Vig Victor. Which, thank you for the guide. That was that not how I would have said. Not how it. you would have said. I would have said, said video game character. I don't know. Vig Victor. Yes. Kit mentioned the possibility of getting the two actors for Nintendo Week on an episode of the podcast, and both of you have mentioned an eventual episode with Reggie. This begs the question, how easy do you think it might be to get other prominent former Nintendo employees to join in for the podcast? Howard Phillips was mentioned when he was going through Kit's Nintendo Power Collection, or perhaps Howard Lincoln, the chairman of NOA back in the 90s. Have any former Treehouse members been interested in stopping by? Yeah. What's yeah. Your, what's your answer? My answer is we can definitely ask people. I can, don't think can, it would be can a we post. call up Howard Lincoln and put him on the speakerphone right now? Do, <laughs> Do you, you have, have his number? number? I don't have his number. I don't have his number. I was terrified. I never met him. I, I never, met him twice. I never met but him. I never got his. I didn't ask for his number. When okay. I met him, unfortunately. Yeah. I'd probably get it though. From somebody. Um, I think this might be harder than people might think. Well, it depends on who it is. Howard Howard Phillips, pretty hard. Howard Lincoln, pretty hard, because he still has a lot of association. Oh, Howard Phillips might be down to talk. He's doing some. He's doing some speaking circuits. He's going to some events. <laughs> he's been on some like TV shows. I think people carry like the weight of working at Nintendo, and there's like so, it's like, oh, can I say that? Can I talk about that? Yeah. Am I am I still under a perpetual NDA, NDA about, about literally everything that, yeah. that doesn't actually it's, qualify it's for an NDA? Basically, been like baked into you. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of people that might see this as like, oh, I'm I'm gonna get you know, 30 years later, I'm gonna get lightning. You bolted. don't work there anymore. The ninjas <laughs> right. are not gonna get you. Calm down. Right. Yeah. But there's definitely some former Nintendo people that we want to get on the show. Um, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> But I've also seen some other people get asked that on Twitter and be like, I'm under an NDA. I can't do that. We're, yeah. not, we're not breaking any NDAs no, on this show. No, we're not breaking <laughs> any NDAs on this show. Look, we wouldn't be here if we were. Exactly. Yeah. The show is completely And we wouldn't expect fine. any guests to do that either. Right, yeah. right. Even if they yeah. weren't there anymore. Yeah. We, exactly. do have a, we do have a great list of guests. That we're we gonna, do have a very good gonna, list of we're guests. We're going to start, start working, working, working that Reggie. way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Vic Boss... If you could have any classic Nintendo ca game or any classic game, I should start over on this. If you could have any classic Nintendo game or any classic game, if you can't, what, how do you read this? You read this one. I'm getting you, really twisted up on this one. <laughs> if you could have any classic Nintendo game or any classic game, if you can't think of a Nintendo game, uh, <laughs> come back with a crazy new gameplay style and dev, what would it be? For example, Ice Climbers come back as a hack and slash with a two-player focus developed by Platinum Games. So basically, a classic game reimagined. Yes. What would you do? With a new developer and a new Nintendo, uh, with a new um, gameplay style. Right. Um, the answer I'm going to give, I will not take credit for, but this is something that... Um, James Milkey, do you remember him? He used to be the editor-in-chief of EGM. No, but okay, um, continue. He told me this a long time ago when I worked at Namco. He's like, you know, Dig Dug is a great game, <laughs> but what if it came back as a claustrophobic first-person game? First-person underground digging. And you're actually like oh, pumping up these things in first-person. Oh, and that'd it, be scary. And, it, and it's dark. And it's claustrophobic, and it's a little spooky. That's scary. I was like, "That's a cool idea." Being buried is like pretty freaky. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that'll never happen. That's, I mean, Dig Dug is pretty cutesy, but it's an yeah. interesting idea. Okay. So I have to give him credit for that, James Milky. All right. Yes. What about um, uh, like a No More Hero style Legend of Zelda? Oh. Where Link becomes like Travis Touchdown character. Like very stylized. Okay, like a Le punk rock Zelda. A punk Zelda. rock Zelda. Oh, well, they already did that artwork of, of Link as a rocker, so... I he mean, already has a Switch shirt. It, you might as well make it now. You've gone this far. Right. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> uh, that could be neat. That yeah. could be kind of cool. Yeah. Very stylized. And have Suda51 Suda do it? Suda do it, yeah. Huh. I kind of like that. Suda's very creative. He yeah. can definitely do something cool with that. Hmm. Okay. Right? Interesting. Imagine Princess Zelda as like a punk rock. 
Uh, Link has our final question. All right. Back to Smash Brothers. Which okay. Xenoblade 3 character would you like most to see get into Smash? Mm. Not based off of hotness, because oh. Lance would be the obvious choice, sure. but their potential as a unique fighter. Ah. Interesting to do now that we're done with Smash. Yes. Of like, if Smash was still happening now, what, what character, character would you put in? What character could you put in there? So we had Shulk from mm -hmm. the first, Z so and we had Pirate yeah, Mithra sword. from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Mithra, yeah. So. Is that the only ones? Uh, yes. yes, yes. I like Mio. Okay. I think there's something cool you can do with the two rings that she uses. Yeah. It's not like a sword user as well, so there's, you know, some differences can, there. I mean, what's one more sword character at this point? That's what I'm saying. Like, you don't need yeah. another one, so you probably want a different thing. Yeah. Um, and she's, she's very fast. And yeah, yeah. I, can, I feel like she could be neat. She could be, like, almost like, um... Have a move set that's like yeah, like uh, the Fire Emblem character. Lucina. Yeah, uh, maybe like kind of like, like speedy I do like Lucina. and yeah, yeah, that could be kind of cool. Okay, I would pick Mio. Hmm. Um, this is where I shock you and say the answer actually is Lands. You like the big shield. I, I like it, making him a very defensive oriented character. Yeah, and I just love it when he slams that thing down and becomes a gun. Can you can you imagine how cool that would look as like a final smash or something? Like, I think there's a lot of really cool things you could do with that. Yeah, so that's cool. So that's the answer. But it, it is a big sword, but it's done very differently. It, it's almost like a big shield. It's like a sword shield. Right. Yeah. I think that yeah. could be really neat. So the choice is Lance, but not because of the hotness. Yeah. But what about those alt costumes for Lance though? Ooh. I'm here for that. I am here for that. That is all of our questions. How exciting. Um, thank you so much to our wonderful Patreon subscribers for these great questions every yeah. week. Uh, we really love love to hear from you guys. Okay, um, moving on to our superstar shout outs. The ranks have grown quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, we make those graphics. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you going first? Uh, you can go first. Okay. Aaron Hash. Ben Eichhorn. Dan L. Eigenverse. From Raul with Love. Jordan Collette. Kiss My Flapjack. Mike Chin. Mr. Rogers. Paul Gale Network. Rain Tech. Roy Eschke. Simon Barrera. Switching It Up underscore. The Shark Among Men. And VGM Life. Yay! Excellent, excellent, excellent. Outstanding. Um, what a great group. Great group. One Up Club graduation service. Here we go. A. Ron Burgundy. Adam Edwards. Jean Malari. Ale Alejandro. Alexander Pratt. Angela Bycroft. Bagel. Bettina Tsang. Bookum Dano. Brad SF56. Bruce Dash. Candace Roper. Chancellor Fairley. Christopher Lay. Cozy Tar. Captain Cinnamon Buns. Captain Alex. Daniel Valencia. Doxon. Doo Doo Face. Douglas, Douglas Chumix. Ducatista. Dustin E. Dino Punch. Elite Peach. Espars 50. Ezerato. Fairbound. Fred Rossi. Gar. Garrett Fish. Handsome Warrior. Ian Chia. Israel or Izzy. Jay Rando. Jabroni Jones. Jackie Z. JK99. JBJ. Jeff Yoakum. Jeffrey Hernandez. Jesse Hernandez. John Responte. Jonathan Rowe. Jordan Hammerly. Joseph DeHayes. Joshua Clements. Juji Fruit. Jess Camtro. Kai Comercio. Kawa2796. Kevin. Kevin Delane. Kidarati Dance With Me. K Madman TV. You gotta say that one. Chris Dorati Kid. Kyle Gamer Barry Rookie. Kyle Kyle Kretzer. Kyle LaBeouf. Kyler Nelson. Linnell Stickman. Lego My Frago. Link. Chris Dorati. Lit. Lucas Pico. Luis. Uh, Malfrink. Mamu. Marcelo. Oh, Marcelo. Marky Man 64. Maru Mayhem. Matthew Rewald. Megan. Michael Cravens. Michael Mazer. Mikey. Murph. Mytran. Uh, Nazar. Nod Narb. Panda Buns. Patreon user. Piano Psychopath. Prince Charmless. P.S. Wee. Reaver. Red sta Rad State of Mind. Ray Charon. R uh, Ray Clawson. Ryuji Utsuho Oku. R.J. Kern. Rob Osborne. Rox. Ryan Hayes, 521. Ryan Netta. Sam Nealon. Zephazon. Shinryu. Slowbro. Schmiggles. Spicy Munchkin. Steel Citrone. Thomas Alvarez. Troopage. Tug's Puppy Bear. Tyler Roddy, Geistopian. <laughs> Video Game Stupid. Beautiful Dandy. Virtual Bot. Wicked Davy. Will Ernst. Zudiver. Zed! That's it. That's it. Whew. I know a lot of names. All right, we have to wrap it up for today. 
But don't forget to subscribe to our Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Kit and Krista. Join us. It is very fun. And thank you to, for our Patreon members for making this all possible. We love you guys. Um, don't forget to follow us on our other social channels. We're on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. Like, subscribe, do the things. Press that notification bell. I will say it. Smash that subscribe button. I'm Good. not exactly right, but I can still say it. You can say it. That's right. All right. I think that's it. Yes? Yes. Okay. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye.